at home or driving in your car and watching this, you see all five of us, I know the first thing you're thinking, how does Grant look so damn good? <laughs> it's because we're using $50 cameras and he's using a $2,000 camera. <laughs> You didn't say a how second. much the lens costs. I, didn't, I, I don't <laughs> want to know, Grant. I don't want to know. The second <laughs> thing you might be thinking is, where's Skid? And who's this guy? <laughs> it's Eric Mona, everybody. Hi, everyone. Uh, wonderful. We got, wonderful. We got old Dr. Eric Mona in the house tonight, the doctor of style. Uh, Skid uh, had other plans tonight. You know, when we record in our normal life outside of this quarantine, we have everything scheduled way in advance. We don't have like a weekly thing anymore with the exception of Androids and Aliens, uh, which is every other Friday, which is hard enough to, to lock down. Um, so now that we've moved to an every Thursday thing, there might be instances like this where we've got to call in Call in some ringers. <laughs> Bring in a scab. <laughs> Mona across oh. the picket lines, and here he is. <laughs> Skid just texted him, like, vitriolic hate as it happens. I turned off my phone. Ah, uh, great. 36 messages so far today. Uh, how are you, Eric? How are you holding up there? We, we thought am... we were in ground zero, but I think it's even worse for you guys. I mean, we uh, we're here in Seattle. We're on day twenty-seven of our lockdown. This is um, the most presentable I've looked in over a month, and I'm wearing <laughs> pajama pants, so yeah. life is good, and yeah. we're doing the best we can. Yeah, <laughs> we're doing the best we can up here. You look uh, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. I love Are the room well? too. I, I like the room. There's a lot of great uh, artwork. Yeah, back there. it's so it, many this pieces. Is my behind home you. office, my library, my you know, bunch of art in the back, and uh, <sighs> there's all kinds of fun things to distract me from the news of the day in here. I can't imagine how awesome it would be to go through to be able to just browse Eric Mona's library. Am I right, Matthew? Come on. I mean, <laughs> I, I I have dreams sometimes of murdering Eric just so I can <laughs> steal his library. <laughs> you know, you guys just follow me on Instagram. I post all the stuff there no one needs to die that, that, that'll be your, your that's that's that seems like a much uh easier way to do it but i gotta say after 27 days even if you had a knife in your hand outside my door i would be relieved to see each and every one of you I'm going to... <laughs> thank you for coming thank you how are you guys? I, I started to ask you, Eric, before we uh, moved on, but how are you guys eating? Are you eating well? Is anyone eating well? Matthew, I know you're eating well, uh, so I don't really care what you're doing. But the rest of you, are you eating well? Eric, are you? I, I, you're pretty I mean, I'm guy. eating food that we make in the house. That That's a step up from restaurants and delivery and stuff like that, right? Yeah, no, that's good. Um, is I it mean, like all craft crap. macaroni and cheese? or is no, it, uh... no, 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 no. Tonight we're having... Velveeta macaroni. <laughs> <laughs> With yeah. wild Alaskan salmon. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, only the finest here in uh, Shea Mona. <laughs> Grant, you look uh, healthy. You look like you're drinking a gallon of water every 25 minutes. What the hell are you eating over there in uh, Burger Town? Good old home cooking. Uh, tonight was uh, Angel made a steak, asparagus, and mashed potatoes. For uh, lunch, what do I have? I had a V8 vegetable fruit thing um, and a hot dog in a hot dog bun. Uh, so Wait, you that's... had a V8 in a hot dog bun? Uh-huh. Well, yeah, I, I mean, put the V8 in a hot dog bun. Who has right to in. say that they had a hot dog and a hot dog bun? <laughs> well, because yeah, thank you. Angel, Angel tried to make hamburgers the other night, and I said, do we have hamburger buns? And she said no, and I said, shut up. <laughs> I had Stop a hot dog, dog on an English right muffin. Now. So yeah, no, I I, I need the uh, appropriate uh, bread accoutrements for any of my meat. Um, but yeah, potato, no, it's potato it's bun. A, it's a, uh, yeah, it could happen. <laughs> what do you but think it could happen? Is it a potato bun or is it not a potato bun? Is it a Martin's potato rolls? Is it a genuine? I, I, if we had eaten the hamburgers that night, Matthew, it would have been on bread, on whole wheat bread, which although high in fiber content, is not good for a hamburger. Agreed. Like that. Agreed. Agreed. So like just, just all home, home cooking protein, a lot of protein. Joe, what are you eating? Just uh, every type of cheese under the rainbow? Yep. All the cheese I can get my hands on, La Valley. Uh, no, we're not eating well. We're, I mean, we're home cooking, but we're like comfort food cooking, and it's been great. I've had two Mississippi pot roasts. Uh, 
<laughs> in How the last How many ranch month. packets do you have right now? Uh, oh, <laughs> half a packet on in for each pot roast. So I had one okay. packet, and I was like, I'm not going to the supermarket. I just went to the butcher right next door. And This uh, is wartime rationing we all respect exactly, you for. <laughs> exactly. I talked to my brother-in-law, and he was like, I've got two chuck roasts in the freezer. I'm holding out for, you know, he's going to have his Mississippi pot roast later. Uh, but <laughs> no, yeah, we're, we're doing, we're, you know, we're making Indian and stuff like that. It's just food that we love and, and it keeps us sane, uh, you know, all cooped up here. But we did say the other night, we were like, we have to stop eating comfort meals and uh, just, just do a plant diet. <laughs> it's hard, man. Oh. Comfort is if you can't find comfort, all you can find is comfort in food these days. It's not totally. like, oh, let me just go find comfort somewhere else. And so I, I've been going to the grocery store every Monday, spending an exorbitant amount of money uh, there because I don't I want to get as much as possible. It still only lasts a week. And then I come home, I load up all the, the, the fridge and everything, and my wife and I just look at it and we're like, I don't want any of this. I don't want to eat any of this. I just want garbage mainlined into my veins so that I feel <laughs> just a, a modicum of happiness uh, throughout the day. Uh, so I, but the problem is it's backfiring and now I just feel awful all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, are you but, getting uh, out in your backyard like every day? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm getting out there. I'm taking Archer out there. The weather's been great, which no, but I mean awesome. like, are you doing your workout like every day out back? Yeah. I'm working outside. I, I actually, my gym, uh, let it was kind of, like, I think a lot of gyms are doing this to like keep their clients paying the membership fee. They were like, come take equipment. So I went there, I got a bunch of plates, big barbell kettlebells and all this shit. So I've got everything I need here and I just follow the workouts online. So I'm doing CrossFit in the yard. Uh, UPS guy thinks I'm insane, but uh, I'm getting a good oh my sweat God. on I really you know need to drive out there and, and rent a drone just so I get aerial footage. <laughs> of Troy, doing his workouts. Squats. Troy, you know what's really a good weight is a cash register. Just filled to the brim. <laughs> you can just grab that and just get just out. You should be in good shape. Do some yeah. thrusters. Yeah. Uh, the heavier, the better with cash registers. Yeah. That's what absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, well, we're doing the best we can. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I think tonight's going to be fun. Obviously, it's a it's a bummer. Uh, we don't have Skid, um, but he emailed us two days ago, said that he couldn't go uh, tonight, and that's when I started uh, just vomiting uh, out of my asshole, um, <laughs> trying to come up with what we can do because we're, how we laughed la left last week's session. I'm thinking to myself like, how do I go forward from there without Skid? It can't be done. It no. can't be done. Can't be done and without so uh, cars or they. <laughs> The gentleman Noel, <laughs> the gentleman Noel, and so just the, ever, ever since that moment, the wheels have just been, and uh, that's what we're going to be dealing with tonight. And then at about, let me just look at my text here. I want to get the exact timestamp of when I started uh, throwing up. Joe texted me at uh, eleven thirty-four this morning. Uh, I know it's very last minute, but want to try to get Mona the guest tonight. And I just was like, vomit emoji, vomit emoji, vomit emoji, <laughs> sick emoji, vomit emoji. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So nice. Uh, so here we are. And uh, I hope that I, was a catharsis literally for you. <laughs> it was just like, rah, rah. no, I think this will work. I think this will be great. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you vomited, but we're still sick and realized you had to vomit some more. <laughs> still coming up. Uh, I think you're going to have to keep all that workout gear you took from your, your gym, Troy, after you vomited all over it. It's real. It's real ugly. Um, we're going to have some fun tonight. Eric, I'm sure you've listened to episodes one and two religiously, uh, watched um, the videos, and you're fully up to date on the story. Ever since I was invited to join the stream some three and a half hours ago, <laughs> I've been studying up. What a guy. What a trooper. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the nuts and bolts of it is we have a, a very interesting party here. Um, four members, one of which is not with us tonight. They uh, they came together. In, in episode one, we see them um, earlier in their adventuring days uh, saving a, a young girl who had been kidnapped from her home and taken by a werebear uh, who was uh, upset that one of his children was murdered by a hunter. And so it was kind of like his uh, attempted payback. They were able to save that young girl. And then uh, word of their deed reached uh, other people around. They're not a big time group uh, that everyone knows who they are, but someone uh, heard about them. and was like, are you the ones that saved that little girl? I actually have a cousin in Magnamar. She's a bookkeeper who is looking for people like you. You should go talk with her. And so they did. And in doing so, uh, they were offered a job to go to the town of Ravenmore. 
a town that, due to a clerical error, had not paid its taxes in some 15 years. <laughs> it's uh, kind of a backwoods town, and so nobody really paid attention to it. And annually, it wouldn't have been a lot of money, but because it's been so uh, backed up, it's actually turned out to be around 500 gold pieces. So this woman sent her brother-in-law to go try and collect the taxes. Long story about her relationship with her brother-in-law, but long story <laughs> short, he never returned. About a week before uh, he was going to be uh, arriving in Ravenmore, he sent a letter to say, uh, making great time, can't wait to get this over with, talk to you soon. Never heard from him again. So they, this party, went to Ravenmore. They get there and they find out this town is really backwards. Mm. Not quite sure what's going on here, but they finally, uh, after a meeting with the mayor's brother, uh, who seemed very standoffish to the point where he was ready to throw down for a fight, the mayor comes out onto his porch, tells his brother to calm down. Uh, he's very, very cordial. White suit, wiping his neck with a handkerchief. Boy, boy welcome. <laughs> and he says, welcome, <laughs> welcome to Ravenmore. And at that moment, I imagine... Professor uh, Maxine Vetro is just watching him and hearing those words. Welcome to Ravenmore. Welcome to Ravenmore. Welcome to Raven. It starts to echo in her mind. Welcome to Raven, 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 Ravenmore. Welcome to Riddleport. You hear? What? And now across from the table, from you, Professor, is a greasy-looking middle-aged man. He looks like he may have been attractive when he was younger, but booze and who the hell knows what else have left him with a wan, sallow complexion. In spite of that, he's dressed rather smartly. He's got a three-piece suit on. There's a bowler hat sitting next to him on the table. His name is Xavier Crane. He is the one that just welcomed you to Riddleport in this seedy little tavern. You... Professor Vetro and your associates are here to speak with him about a job. Standing off to the side of Xavier Crane is a big, brutish-looking fellow watching the rest of the bar while you speak to him. To your left is Braven. To your right is Alfonso. Carizor is nowhere to be seen. Xavier Crane continues... No offense, milady, but you seem a bit out of place in the Rotgut district. An establishment such as this is accustomed to serving whores and thieves, and you don't seem like neither. Your friends, on the other hand, well, they look right at home here amongst the downtrodden and disenfranchised. I'm merely an enthusiastic viewer and consumer of the world. I make no judgments. I'm a professor of anthropology. I like to see how the people live. Well, that's very interesting. Interesting that you would come to a person like me to take a job like this. Uh, what about your friends here? What do they do? Well, I'll let them introduce myself. Well, in excuse me. I'll let them introduce themselves. Braven. You've been drinking heavily and you're slurring your words, <laughs> Professor. <laughs> yes. I do enjoy a grasshopper or two. She does that from time to time. And as Braven, her companion, I can assure you that I am not a hobgoblin. Good to know. Yes, he is not. Uh, is a good He's not a hobgoblin. Right as rain, not a hobgoblin. <laughs> Alfonso, what about you? Are you a hobgoblin? Well, of course not. Uh, Alfonso, by the way, uh, in this flashback, has a different voice and uh, is going to continue to have a different voice because I decided to change his voice this week. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to the episode and I was like, that is not Alfonso. And so when I, when I kept saying his name out loud, I was like, Alfonso, Alfonso. Show me that, the real that, Alfonso. Where, where is he? He's in there somewhere. And so I drug him out this week. And so uh, I'm going to do something different. are you familiar different. with the musical The Drowsy Chaperone? No. Never heard of it. Is anyone? I, I, yes. It, it, <laughs> I highly recommend checking out the song, I Am Alfonso. Ooh. For oh. inspiratione. I like for it. For inspiration. All right, I'll get into it. It's so what's his? I'm wrong. It's Adolfo. I'm an idiot. I am. Damn it, Matthew. Oh, oh man. So embarrassing. I'm so embarrassed. Just... 
threw their musical paper in the air out of anger. Is that what they do? They're Is books. that what's called? It's, musical yeah. paper? It's the book, right? Brought. They throw the book. Yes. You throw it. You throw it in the air and you shout at it. Ah. You, yes. There. There. You've got. You've got it now. G clefs and treble clefs all over the place. Uh, all right. So, what's your new shitty voice? Uh, my new shitty voice is a uh, little more like this. Oh. Uh, Alfonso Moria. He just says his name to this guy. No, he's, uh, he says, I am, uh, I've got a keen eye for small details. The things that should help us uh, discover the problem you have and solve it quickly. That is my role. And he smiles, this winning smile of a total dirt ball, and then just like <laughs> runs his hands through his slicked black hair. Uh, so the, the man looks at all three of you weirdos and uh, kind of smiles and nods, uh, fingers with his bowler hat a little bit. He's like, basically, I need runners. This job is a simple grab and drop. I don't know how familiar you, you are with the area. So here's a map. He slaps a map onto the table. It's rudimentary. Uh, he's like, look, right over here to the southeast of the city, there's a cove about a mile and a half offshore. Even at low tide, there's no beach, so you'll have to traverse some rather precarious rocks. It'll be the first grotto you come across. You can't miss it. There's a large rock on the cliff face above the opening, painted with this symbol. And he points to an image that looks like a pair of uh, owls, like intertwined. You can't miss it. You'll see the symbol. Once you see that grotto, head on inside. My man will be waiting right there when you arrive. Just tell him that you're the runners. Collect whatever he gives you and bring it to the drop point here. He points to another uh, place on the map that's called Reaper's Cove. It's like, just bring it there where you'll be paid the rest of your fee. Half now, half once the job is complete. However, I was told there would be four of you. And just as he says that, a dwarf in half plate ambles over to the table. <laughs> you need some extra hands. <laughs> well, we Come are in down, luck, my friends. You see, it is it is fate. We uh, just lost one of our number in our last uh, terrible job. And luckily we have someone new showing their face at the right time. Sit down, dwarf. Yes. Join us. I'm not, I'm not just someone. <laughs> I am Voldrif. Fifth son of Rathar, the eighth son of Gurik, the son of the fourth Lord Absol of the Talmud clan of Ganazur. Do you know what that makes me? I'm what? Sorry, I did not follow all of it. A mercenary! It makes me nothing! <laughs> so sword! No one has time for a, for a fifth son in Ganazur, so here I am in Riddleport selling my swords and my axe. <laughs> Please make your acquaintance. You should know I will not be adventuring with you. I'm merely uh, a go-between for this adventuring party, and uh, I, but I will relay all you say to my friend. Makes sense. You look a bit soft to me. Well, what can I say? I'm just a mild-mannered professor. <laughs> I know nothing of hardship and violence and an anything more than anthropology. Never had much time for book learning. <laughs> well, as long as you are good with an axe, you'll be welcome here. Please, oh, sit I'm down. Let best. me buy you an ale. Excellent. Free ale's a good opening negotiation. <laughs> He'll call over uh, the uh, server and, uh, and order What will it be? <clears throat> the What's biggest it? and most expensive ale you have, lass. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> She comes back. I can tell we're all going to be fast friends. <laughs> she comes back with like a hand truck, a giant beer on it. <laughs> there you go. Ooh. No Does one ever orders from? this, but if you finish it in five minutes, we put your Polaroid on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a T-shirt that says, I did the big ale. Uh, I'd rather like to see that. Is called. Let's see you no do it, Dwarf. Let's see you do is it. Is there a straw... Oh, no, you got to drink it like like a real dwarf. <laughs> uh, how big is how big is this thing exactly? It's not it's drinkable. It's 14 it's gallons this. of ale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's the equivalent trick. of two kegs. It's an old <laughs> trick. I'll take the time. I don't need a t-shirt. 
<laughs> she points to the wall. There's no Polaroids up there. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite what I thought. Yeah. And he just starts have... drinking and listening. You would have been the first. She walks away. <laughs> There's never and, a uh, first. Xavier Crane continues like, all right, well, good. It seems like you have your fourth. This is what I expected. Um, I can leave you to uh, you four to uh, speak amongst yourselves. Uh, you have the job. Just get it done by tomorrow, if possible. Do you have any questions? What yes. dangers could my friends expect? Whatever dangers uh, exist here in Riddleport. Anything and everything. But to be honest, it should be a pretty simple grab and drop. Well, what is it exactly that we are grabbing? Um, I've given you all the details you need. Uh, this is is it cellar. large? Is it small? Easy to carry, or do we need to bring a cart? I, don't, I think these details are important. As I said, full, need, I'm a man of detail. Do they need a bag? Or m maybe two bags? You no, understand are, our dilemma. I understand your dilemma. You'll be handed the appropriate carrying uh, container for <laughs> uh, the product. Uh, just, there's a reason there's four of you. I do not know how much will be given to you, but it won't be more than you can handle. And certainly well worth it for what you're being paid. On that map uh, that he showed us, what's the distance between the two places, between the pickup and the drop off? Is it like, you know, a couple days journey, or is it one day journey, or is it a matter of hours? Or no, Riddleport you can get around in, in one day. The, the oh, cove it's within is a the mile city. and a half off. Yeah, it's within Riddleport. The cove, uh, the speaking, uh, he says a mile and a half offshore, like uh, along the rocks okay. to the southeast. Reaper's Cove is like in the northwest section of town. Hmm. So once you get back into the city, it's just a matter of getting across town. Tell me something. Is anyone else interested in this product besides us? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Clearly you've dealt in this type of business before. We do have certain competitors out there that would be uh, interested in something like this. That's why we're not hiring teenagers or uh, street urchins to do this sort of job. We're hiring cell swords and uh, people who know people points to the professor, uh, and definitely not hobgoblins, and yes. people whose accents change uh, after three episodes. All yes. people who will never be missed one day when they all disappear. Well, this is Riddleport after all. You know what you're getting yourselves into. You want to make a quick buck or don't you? I do. Uh, speaking of that uh, quick buck, how much is it uh, exactly? Well, you, uh, from what I understand, uh, we agreed upon 150 gold pieces each. You'll get 75 now and 75 once the job is finished. It's a good, good day's page to pick something up and drop it off. And we're under the impression that this is, it, it is a day's work. Like we're going to go work, out, yeah. pick it up, walk it over, drop it. Okay. Yep. He just wants it done by tomorrow night. I've got a very important question to ask. Please. This mission, this thing you're going to have us do. It's nothing of a criminal nature, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just no. kidding, of course it is. <laughs> We're in Middleport. Good, good. You don't That's have to wrong. answer a question like that, mate. <laughs> Are you wearing a wire? You had me worried uh, there for a second, friend. <laughs> all you're doing is picking up a package and dropping it off. No one needs to know what's inside of that package. And in fact, it's part of your uh, job, part of your payment to make sure that uh, no one knows what's inside of that. And just pick it up and drop it off. No one will be the wiser. There's much worse things going on in Riddleport than what we're doing. Uh, your contact, what is his name? I'm not sure who you'll speak to that day, but there will be someone there, and there will be a package. You pick it up, you drop it off. Okay. Are we allowed to look at the package? You can look at the outside. I would prefer if you didn't look inside, though. Prefer or demand? Demand. <laughs> Shit. And do we know anything about this guy? Like, is he like a, a you know, a well-known thug? Is he scary? Is he a nobody? You guys is can he... roll a knowledge local. Save roll a quick crate. knowledge loc. Well, knowledge Let's local, do... Ooh, tone 20, loc. 20 even. 19. Wild thing. Couple good knowledges. Uh, anything from the dwarf and the I'm not, not from goblin? here. I'm not from <laughs> here. I don't know anything about this town. I just know that, that I'm not a hobby. <laughs> uh, all right. So both uh, Alfonso and the professor would know that, like, 
he's a guy that isn't very well known, but uh, he deals in uh, like uh, drugs. Yeah. Um, can I do a sense motive just to? I, I want to get the sense if he is literally knows we're going to die or not. You know what I mean? Like, is <laughs> like that's what I'm looking for. Is he sending us to death, or does he just think this is you know a dangerous job that he's paying us for? Yeah, roll sense motive. Uh, Twenty even again. Uh, Twenty adjusted. even again. Um, all right, so he's definitely being cagey and shady and withholding information, um, but you don't know if it's he's sending you into to your death or like not telling you uh, the extent of uh, the uh, war between him and his competition or if he's just a shady dude. Yeah, it's very hard to tell. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. But he's definitely withholding information from you. Sure. I mean, he he, he said as much. So. Um, I don't have any more questions. I have one last question. Yes, there multiple, not Hobgoblin. There are multiple, multiple of your men at that cove. Why can't they make the drop off at Reaper's Cove? Well, they are good men. They are hired to do their job. I need people like you in case things go bad. That mm -hmm. is not something they specialize in. Now, Division hopefully, nothing will go bad, but... The reason Wait. I'm in business is because I find the right people for the job, and the four of you, <laughs> you are the right people for this job. I All will right not be joining that. you. I just want to clarify, I will not be executing the job. I'm merely the go-between. Right. Um, my friend, uh, the Crystal Ghost, uh, the Crystal Ghost will be uh, will be doing the job. I am just a, uh, a middle person. Just want to make that absolutely clear. That's right. Okay. Everyone? Okay. What? Well, you, you represent some kind of place. You represent some kind of ghost. Uh, yes, the crystal ghost is. Uh, it is widely believed that uh, she is no mortal being, but some sort of immortal ghost that can uh, rain down fierce destruction with her crystal sword. It is shocking to me you have not heard of the crystal ghost. Voldrif sounds like legit. Or he looks like legitimately for the first time. Like whoa, undead. Like that's not cool. Yes, well. But then he recovers. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I killed a skeleton once. <laughs> oh, she's friendly to her allies. She's very friendly. Don't worry. Nobody worry. Oh, she's, she's a friendly, friendly ghost. ghost. She's, she's a friendly ghost. ghost. She's a friendly I've ghost. I've never heard of such a thing. Crystal, the friendly ghost. <laughs> well, uh, her name is Crystal. No, <laughs> if there are no further questions, I'll leave the four of you to get better acquainted uh, with your new self sword friend. Uh, thank you, and uh, here is the payment as agreed upon. Half now, half when the drop is made. I have a feeling we could probably do business again if this goes well. We're always in need of runners. Uh, good day, gentlemen, milady, and say good hello to your friend, you. Crystal Gale. And crystal Ewok. Ghost. The Crystal Ghost. That's the Whatever. Crystal Ghost. <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Already gone. <laughs> if any of you want any. If any of you want any of this beer, feel free to take a scoop. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish it all. <laughs> I'm already on my second. <laughs> He's been like That's dipping it. in and, and drawing out of Mine is much larger than yours. <laughs> <Second Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alfonso is going to look him over. So, uh, was it Voldrif you said? Yes, um, and when you look him over, you notice a couple of, of things that I didn't mention before. One of them is that he's got like a big old battle axe attached to his back. And the, uh, the other thing is you notice the only other weapon that he has is like this very intricate dagger on his hilt um, that has like a that has like a blue gemstone set into it. Um, and he's looking like his his uh, his half plate armor is he's traveled quite a distance, so it's a little bit rough in places. His his axe, on the other hand, looks magnificent. You also notice that there's a scar running along the side of his head, just above his left ear. That's like basically just kind of comes right up to the front of his face, very near his eye, and you can't quite place it and understand exactly what it is but there's something about that eye it's like kind of milky in the corner it's kind of messed up and, and he, he doesn't look straight ahead that one hmm. but other than that he looks like a totally friendly chap and he's got big bushy br uh, black beard uh, he looks like he's about middle-aged dwarf and he says yes Voldrif Voldrif uh, Tolman from the Tolman clan of Galazur 
Is that Little Voldrif pair. with an F or Voldrif, Voldrif with a TH? With an F, yes, with an F, with an F, <laughs> yes. Some people spell it with two Fs. I don't give an F. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But that was a joke. Uh, very, very clever. Very clever indeed. Yes. You don't get dwarf humor. It's big on puns. Uh, who are you all? <laughs> What's your names? My name is Alfonso Moria. I am an adventurer, nice. an investigator, and it is fitting to me, uh, almost too fitting, that you have sat with us at this opportune time. I wonder, is it fate that brings us together or something more insidious? I can't take my eyes off of this scar on your face. Forgive my rudeness, but I cannot place where it could have come from. What happened Oh, I'm to happy you? to tell you where it came from. I said I was from the Tolman clan from Galizer on the Starstone Isle, and well, it turns out I was invited to leave, if you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> yes, yes, I A understand. little memory of home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, we have that in common. I was also unceremoniously asked to leave. Oh, is uh, that right? That is right, yes. And so I found myself here. Uh, it is lucky we have found each other. All oh, the best flotsam and jets and washes up in Riddleport. <laughs> That's what they say, yes. <laughs> That's what I said. That's the town motto. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Welcome to Riddleport. The best parts of Manchester. <laughs> How about you? You say you're not a hobgoblin, but you smell a bit goblin-y to me. My cover is this. I'm an encyclopedia tr salesperson, traveling, but I'm all out of encyclopedias. <laughs> so I boil people's blood all day, and I'll let you in on a little secret. I am a hobgoblin. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's, uh... <laughs> I've never actually met a hobgoblin before. That's exciting. 75 gold pieces and I met a hobgoblin. This is the best table I ever sat at. Quiet. Not everyone has to know. Seven gold pieces and a hobgoblin. <laughs> the, 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 that's not the important part. <laughs> the, the, Seven gold pieces and an encyclopedia. Yes. Yeah, perfect. The Thank serving you. woman comes over. Did you say hobgoblin? Would you like <laughs> to try the 14 gallon beer challenge? I hear your kind can make it happen. You get your Polaroid on the wall, hobby. <laughs> hobby. It's a scam. It's a scam. Face under his hat right now, just like sneaking back into his chair. I think the hobgoblin's gonna take the challenge. <laughs> He's just rubbing his head for good luck. I'll go get the beer. Um, happy to take a constitution <laughs> roll on that one uh, to do it if it gets people's attention off of me. But I imagine that would actually increase. It. <laughs> did she tell me some? Did she call you hobby? I rather <laughs> like that. I Ooh, don't rather like. I don't it. like it at all. I like it quite a bit. It has a certain ring to it. Uh, yes. Oh God. Yeah, so is, like is Braven your real name? Is that just part of your cover identity as well? Braven was a name given to me. My birth name is Goshkar the Unbroken. That's pretty cool. I like this that. news to me. The stranger sits with us for five minutes. You tell him the secret of your backstory. I do not know. How is I mean, that? How does that this happen? One's not, this one's look not good at secrets. Look at how clean his axe is. And he's got that dagger with the elaborate gemstone and, and embroidery on it. It's very cool. I feel like I can trust him for some reason. Yes. Yeah, you sure can. That's so right. I'm gonna... If if I can trust you, maybe you'll trust me. You looked a little agitated. Maybe even scared when the idea of a ghost came up. What's that about? Well, I mean, you know, it's undead, isn't it? It's unnatural. That's... Yes. Aren't you afraid of things that are unnatural, like undead and arcane magic? You're talking to a hobgoblin that can boil people's blood underneath their skin. No. <laughs> oh, well, I guess we all have things to learn from one another. Some of us have a, of an expanded definition of what is and is not uh, natural. I will say I that. See. Yeah, Point you got order, something the to crystal add. Ghost is a, uh, a pure force of righteousness in the world. Uh, she transcends bounds of death and, li and life and natural and unnatural and good and bad, and she is just pure righteousness. Hmm. Look it Look, up. For, for 150 gold pieces, I'm good with whatever you guys got. It's fine. It's fine. So tell me, where was your last uh, fight? Where have you most recently spilled blood? 
I'm uh, well. I got punched in the lip outside the grinning pixie not far down the street. I spilled some blood on the cobblestones. Um, before that, I got in a fight in a little town called Crow Stump in near Mathas on the way up from the islands. I've been around. I've been around. You know, I fought some stuff. I once uh, put a. Uh, uh, I once took my axe and cut the head off of a scarecrow. But it turns out it was just a scarecrow. It wasn't animated or nothing. It was just out of scarecrows. But I killed it. <laughs> but you if spilled no blood alive, that day. If it was alive, it would be dead. Um, can I just get... Do I see looking at this guy? Like, is his armor uh, dented and banged up and his blade, like, well used? Uh, as opposed um, to, like, being all pristine and, like, basically a, a, a tough-talking rookie? Uh, well, that's an interesting question, and it's kind of hard to answer because his armor is all beat up and very, like, like it's been worn presumably by him over yeah. a long journey, dented up and whatever. But his axe is, like, polished, gleaming silver, beautiful, intricate, you know, dwarven mm. manufacturing work on it. Um, it looks really nice. I mean, it looks like it was just bought in a shop yesterday. The, uh, the dwarvish axe on your back, what is its name? Oh... That's a good question. I'll call it uh, Thuggernaut. <laughs> Thuggernaut. <laughs> just, I literally just came up with that when I looked at this finger puppet on the desk. His name is Thug, Thug, Thuggernaut. Thuggernaut. That is, that is Gotta so good. Got to be careful good. with how you pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, I figured the blade so beautiful must be named, uh, even if it was only named in this instant at the table. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> where did you uh, come by it? It was my um, father's battle axe, actually. I took it before I left. Before oh, I was family. escorted out of the family home, I thought, oh, I'll have that. And was your father uh, aware of this? I mean, <laughs> my father had lots of axes. There's no telling he would have recognized the Thuggernaut as gone, you know. And I haven't, honestly, I haven't talked to him in months. So I wouldn't know. Okay. You, it's only Who been cares? months since you've been uh, escorted from your family home. I mean, yeah, that's right. It's been 14 months since I was asked to leave. I figure it's healed up quite nice, don't you? I, I thought bad. the hair would grow over it, but it's like a curse. <laughs> <laughs> Give it time; it it will grow back. Yeah. Time heals everything. I that's what I think. That's what. That's, I think. A, so that's a musical theater reference for you all as well. Gross. Oh, I don't understand that at all. Uh, so, Professor, you 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 say you're the representative of the ghost. I'm I'm just her friend. I'm just a uh, I'm just a mild mannered friend of the Crystal Ghost. I have no official connection. I refer certain uh, contacts to her when they come my way, just as any good friend would do. Wouldn't you? What? what I mean, no. What kind of um, percentage do you take off of that? So, like, of the 75 gold that goes to us all around the table, presumably you give some of that to the ghost and keep some of it yourself. How much do you keep? Oh, I would never steal from the Crystal Ghost. The Crystal go go Ghost is a force of righteousness. I'm so really, I'm a really no, a no. good friend. So you arrange all of her work or its work for for free. I you put it I, in contact with people who need missions and things. Yes, and I accept as my payment the invitation to see worlds I would not have gotten to see before. She, uh, she uh, the professor comes from money. She comes are from a great deal of money. She has no need for it. Are you open to other clients? You Not mean every you would... job, you just get walking past the table and going, oh, 75 gold. Sounds like a job for Voldriff. Well, I might need an agent. I should <laughs> say, there are people who do this far better than me. I just happen to have the occasional ear of such a renowned vigilante as the Crystal Ghost. I see, I see, I see. Well, if you do find an opening, Voldriff is always willing to be hired. It's good to know. It's very good to know. <laughs> I'll keep you in mind. 
<laughs> send me your headshot and resume. Yeah, Whenever there's an resume. opening in the group and you need someone to come in at the last minute, Voldriff is your man. <laughs> Let's take things slow. If you have a contract or two that come your way and you want me to take a look at it, I'd be happy to do so. But, you know, we don't need to sign anything. All right. All right. I like it. And he holds out his hand after spitting at it. Oh, a tradition. <laughs> yeah, so nobody loves tradition more than the professor. Uh, a local, a local tradition. Yeah, she's well, a sucker the for it. Tradition. The deal is uh, sealed in a timeless and probably <clears throat> internally enduring tradition of a handshake with spit on it. Never in the future will we not want to do that. <laughs> this was such a remarkable and unique experience for me. I'm going to have to write about it tonight in my diary. Please do one F or two. It's no account on my end. And slowly over time, the spit dries on Professor Maxine Vetro's hand as we fade out of this bar scene <clears throat> and fade up on the four of you, um, perhaps some of you in a different form, crossing these rocks on the southeastern part of the city. Just as Xavier Crane said, uh, the beach even at low tide, which it isn't now, is non-existent. It's all rocks. Um, and so it's a little uh, cagey. Some of the rocks are wet. Some are a little mossy. Uh, I assume, what time of day? I won't assume. What time of day uh, are you guys planning on doing this? At night. Night, of course, <laughs> says the crystal ghost. <gasps> oh, the oh, crystal ghost! Oh, oh, my God, she's here. Crystal Ghost is there, and Braven, are you in full hob form? I'm not a human. You're still in human form. No, right? I'm so not a human now. You're not I'm a human. Hobgoblin, yeah. Not I human. only speak in negatives today as to what my status <laughs> is. Simply yes would have sufficed. I'm not not a non. Uh, mm. All right, so you guys are, are 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 having to deal with the darkness on top of the wet rocks and not being able to have great footing. Do you guys all have dark vision? I do. <clears throat> no, yes. uh, I do not. I do not. Okay. Crystal Ghost is good, but uh, Alfonso uh, is going to need some light. Uh, I, I assume that even though you want to keep a low profile, you're going to need some light to make sure you don't fall and break your neck on these rocks. Um, so I'm going to have Alfonso uh, roll uh, an acrobatics check. Uh, that is a 16. 16. Okay, so... You're moving along and a little, little slippy here and there, but you're you're pretty good. The moonlight is bouncing off the water is providing enough uh, so that you don't have to really blast a light spell or anything. But uh, you wish you had dark vision. I Eventually, do. But in that dimness, he also shifts form uh, and will uh, say specifically to Voldriff. Um, I have this uh, trick I do. It will help us all, uh, but it may look a little strange at first. Uh, don't alarm yourself. It is merely uh, cosmetic. And he, like, starts to, like, shift, and his face and jaw, like, extends a little bit, and his ears point a little bit, and he gets some, like, hair under his eyes, and his nose becomes this little pug nose, like a bat and he kind of looks like bat-faced. But everything else pretty much stays the same. His l arms get like a little bit longer, but like his fingers a little bit longer, but otherwise he looks the same, just like an ugly, ugly dude now. <laughs> it's like the, the Teen Wolf uh, transformation. Yes, yes, exactly. Like the, it's exactly I'm gonna throw him a basketball. <laughs> Are you all monsters? <laughs> Are you all hideous monsters? <laughs> the, the crystal ghost tiefling tail flaps out in irritation. Let he without a massive facial scar throw the first stone. <laughs> That's what I've always said. I wasn't judging. I was just curious. I've worked with monsters before. Yes, oh. if you uh, wondered at all what it was that had me asked to leave my home. <laughs> and now you know. Uh, it was, he says it was, with like kind of this. bitterness in his voice and a sadness in his eyes. Uh, it, was just, it was it was this gross. It was pretty vision. much pretty much this right here. You're better <laughs> off on your own. That's everything I've ever learned. You're better off on your own. Other people will only let you down. Your family, most of all. Uh, and then he draws. <laughs> Considering we're now working as part of a team. Business relationships are the only ones where you don't stab each other in the back, as far as I've seen. 
<laughs> I have a low wisdom. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. I was hit in the head with an axe. <laughs> right here. It happened right here. Never been the same ever since. Do you draw something, Alfonso? Uh, yeah, my rapier. So he draws out his rapier. And you're saying because of that acrobatics check, I feel confident to move across the rocks without a torch. Yeah, that's what okay. I wanted to check to see how nimble you could be. Um, but it is a mile and a half uh, journey. I'm not going to have you roll acrobatics the whole time, but you feel like you've got good footing. And uh, by listening to your friends, watch out for this, watch out for that, you're able to safely make it. Um, so taking your time, moving across these wa rocks as the water starts to splash uh, up against you from time to time, uh, throwing you a little bit off balance. Eventually, you get to, uh, you see an opening up ahead. And sure enough, as certainly those of you with dark vision can see, just above it, uh, painted or uh, maybe like charcoal or chalk on the wall, it looks like uh, two owls uh, entangled around each other. There it is. Come, stay low, be quiet. And the dwarf's just like, clang, 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 clang. Hey. <laughs> I'm as uh, quiet right. as I can be. We'll, uh, we'll approach. All right, you approach, and it's not like there's a, a beach you can get on to, to walk in. It's, it's rocks all the way there. Um, so you get up to the op opening, and you walk in. And the first thing you notice is that although the walls of this uh, grotto are all uh, natu the natural rock that you would expect them to be, um, instead of like a, a cave-like waterlogged grotto that you're expecting to walk into, the floor is hard-worked stone. Um, about 25 or 30 feet in, the pathway splits to the left and to the right, um, and there's no one in sight. Let's go to the map real quick. Huh, we were supposed to meet somebody, like, right outside the cave, right? Or he said yep. he'd be right inside one of his men. Um, let's go to the old map -a here. Uh, the professor is, is currently not here. That's right, um... Oh, thank God we have gotten rid of that useless professor. Uh, I will I will find that uh, pawn while you talk amongst yourselves. If you want me to stealth the head, I'm happy to do so. I blend into the shadows. Yes, uh, you can do that. That's, that sounds good to me. I can't see very well by myself, so continue can forward. Can we roll perception to see if we hear here. anything? Yeah, go ahead and roll perception um, or uh, Braven... Zips 19 ahead. perception. 25. 11. 11. All right, so Braven and the Crystal Ghost uh, don't hear anything. However, you do see uh, to the left, there's a, a trickle of water coming from the passageway that kind of trickles down and uh, pulsates a little bit. Like there's a, a constant flow of water mm. kind of pushing against it. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's just like a trickle. It's just yeah. not exactly continuing down the hallway. It's not a lot of water, but it's pulsating. I'm happy to go to the north. Uh, and Braven will stealth ahead. All right, go ahead and roll a uh, stealth check. 17 for a 26 total. Oh, baby. Okay. So you stealth up ahead. You've got that dark vision, which is really going to come in handy here because the room is dark, uh, but you're able to see this situation here. It looks like uh, there's a large opening in the floor with water sloshing around in it, and from time to time the water inside of it uh, splashes up and over the edge of the hole onto the floor, trickling down uh, towards the entryway where you came in. That's why there's a pulsating because the water is like coming out and coming in out and coming in from time to time most likely with the tide um, in the back of the room there appears to be several crates and you can see there's some things inside the crates but you can't quite see what they are from where you're standing um, but there is no one in there no person waiting for you with the drop a uh, braven will step further in and do a quick perception check for any trip wires traps anything unusual before inviting in the rest of the people uh, the rest okay, of the group seven. Um, 14. 
14. Uh, the only thing you notice is uh, you, don't, you don't see any tripwire or anything or any glaring uh, signs of traps, but you do see the bones of several fish and other small mammals uh, around the edge of the hole, just littered around the edge of the hole. Raven comes back and says, No one's there, and I think there's something feeding from the hole in the middle, but I imagine that our cargo is there. Xavier said that he would need four of us to take it, and there's four crates in there, but they're open. Be careful not to look inside. Voldriff. <laughs> okay. Should we investigate the other room first? In case our contact is there. Yes, let's look in there and see if we see I someone alive to speak to us. Find out what's happening here. It's a good idea. Uh, don't you uh, check it out, Braven. Uh, quick stealth check. Uh, Braven gets a 16. Braven gets a 16. Tiptoeing. Uh, just tiptoeing along. Uh, all right, so you see that this room up ahead is similar. Um, but there's nothing in there. There's no crates. There's no hole in the floor. Um, it's completely empty and, and unadorned. Um, and you see that about uh, 40 feet away or so, uh, it opens into what looks like it might be a larger room with the extent of your dark vision, but you don't see anything in there either. You should be able to see a little bit into it, but I'll walk up to the edge. I'll, uh, I'll seal team six, kind of check your corner, smooth up into the corner next to there and peek my head around the corner and look down the hallway. Okay, oh. so you, you hug the wall and mm -hmm. roll across. Okay. While he's gone, What's the policy on if one of us dies? Do we split the, the money, the four shares, evenly among each of us? Yes, whoever survives uh, splits the money evenly. Okay, cool. Yeah, I thought we'd be guess get that up in the air right up front. We decide on the items via games of chance. Uh, that's my favorite <laughs> kind of way to do it. <laughs> it's just easier. It's less hurt just feelings, you know. Makes sense. Makes sense. Braven, you skulk along the wall there and peer into that next room, and you see that it's lit. There's at least uh, uh, four torches, it looks like, uh, in all corners of a, of a square room, but you don't see or hear anything. Don't hear or see anything. Uh, survival check for footprints, and I'm going to return back. Okay. Um, nine. I don't see anything. Nothing jumps out at you. Yeah. That. And he's going to swing past this way towards the other wall and walk back so he can get the full look at the room. He'll stealth while doing so sure. uh, for a 19. You stealth while doing so. Uh, all right, so that's going to give you a pretty good look at that room uh, as you stealth along. And you see it's just like a perfect square uh, with torchlight in all four corners that's uh, illuminating the entire room, whereas every other room you've been in uh, or been walking around has been dark. And he comes back and says, I don't know what the hell's going on here, but there's no one to be seen. It's well lit within. There might be something deeper in. Shall we continue? You want to leave this room behind us with all the stuff we were supposed to come and get? Let I me mean, with the boxes for the stuff? We can check if he's right. We should investigate. I don't like leaving unexplored dead ends behind us. I had a former group who, you know, got killed because of that. He had a former group that got killed because of that. Yeah. We must honor his instinct. <laughs> that, was, that was totally the reason why they all died. Okay, let's go. Um, do you want me to lead the way into the dark room, or do you want to sneak around, Hobby? You're the cell sword. Why don't you head in with that beautiful axe of yours and see what damage all you can do? All right. I reach back and I pull out my uh, battle axe and I've got a shield in the other hand and I waltz my way into the room. The crystal right, ghost has, by now has her crystal long sword out. All right, so Voldriff walks into the room. Uh, Crystal Ghost has drawn uh, her long sword. Alfonso has already had his rapier out. Braven, I'm assuming you... Did you have weapons out while you were walking around, or your weapons are fucking inside of you? Just inside of me. I okay. might have... I'll have a, 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 a pick in my right hand in case okay. something sneaks up right behind me. A toothpick? It is basically... 
he's holding basically what goblins use to sharpen their uh, their teeth. Um, that's his main <laughs> weapon. Grant, I, I can't it. get over how how well I can see all of your pores right now. <laughs> I mean, well, you it's look incredible. Beautiful. I really need some makeup and powder beforehand, I guess. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's pass that camera around every session. Uh, that does sounds anyone... like how the pandemic is going to continue for ages. <laughs> Just ah, passing this camera. How sounds? Lick it. Hands off to the next guy. Uh, does Germ anyone... theory follows vanity. Everyone knows this. <laughs> does anyone follow Voldriff into the room or just let Voldriff go investigate? Uh, yeah, Alfonso is going to come come in behind. The okay. crystal ghost as well. And All right. And what are you doing? Just going to check out the crates? Eyes on that pool, my friends. There's going to be a fish monster or something. Doot, 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 doot. And I'm going to head over to the crates slowly. Okay. But you slowly head over to the crates, cling, clang, cling, clong, as you walk across with your new friends. You get to the crates, and uh, they don't, they're pretty easy to pop open. You don't need a crowbar or anything. Uh, in fact, the lids on three of the four of them are a jar. <coughs> you open it up, and it looks like it's just basic adventuring gear. Not like weapons and armors, although you do see a few maybe rusty daggers. Uh, it's more like trail rations, uh, ropes, pitons, uh, compasses. Uh, there's also several mismatched shirts, pants, shoes, boots, and hats. Does but all the equipment it. look used, Troy? Yes, yeah, used. And there's no uh, can I examine? Sure. I'm not going to be good at this, but maybe I'll talk to the... the um... Which one of you guys... Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, the investigator is Joe. I'm going to yeah. turn to Alphonse, and I'm going to say, this looks like maybe the leavings after a bandit raid or something. Let's check these clothes for bloodstains. Get a bit more history. And then I'm just going to start digging through the clothes and looking for bloodstains. <laughs> All right. Alfonso dig- will make his way up. Or, oh, no, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, as you dig through the clothes... Uh, you stick your hand in and you feel something sharp and it's not like one of those rusty daggers Uh, thankfully uh, you don't have to worry about uh, getting rust poisoning Uh, but it feels like thorny and at that moment this weird little plant comes flapping out of there at you to attack Uh, and right to the north uh, where, uh, well, it would be uh, the crate opposite where Braven's standing in the far back corner. Another one of these small plants wriggles out and starts coming towards Braven. Oh! Oh! Look alive, friends! I hate plant fights. I hate plant fights. It's a plant fight. It's a plant plant fight. fight. There we go, dude. There we go, dude. <clears throat> uh, all right, let's talk a niche. I'm excited. <laughs> I am excited. Let's talk about Alfonso's niche. Uh, 23. Whoa. Yeah. Third level, 20th. Yeah, Brave. baby. 20 flat. 20 flat. Oh, pretty nice. good, Crystal Brave. Go- pretty good, Hobby. Crystal, Crystal Ghost. Oh, 20 flat as well. Wow, who's got the better flat? I've got I'm a plus asking. four to initiative. Oh, oh, I got a plus four to Crystal Ghost. It's wow. a roll off. Wait, you oh. both times this has happened. Are you both twenty or are you both twenty-four? No, we're both twenty with a plus four or bonus. Okay, uh, it's a roll off. It's eight. <laughs> eight as well. Are oh, you it's kidding? the double Oh my roll. god! Oh, this is what the kids come to see. Off. Dub roll off. Unprecedented. Eleven. Fourteen. Oh. <laughs> you knew he was going to win out. You knew he was going to yeah. win out. I'm surprised really? it took that long. Uh, what about Voldrif? I got a 12. Don't expect much from me for initiative, mates. Uh, <laughs> all right, you've got a 12. However, you didn't see this thing uh, come out at you, and it just comes out and tries uh, to sting you. Okay. And I rolled a natural one. Oh, that is come not gonna on, hit. you didn't. Oh, I sure Does did. Does that count? Uh, uh, yeah, that is a confirmed. Uh, well, I, I guess where it has multiple attacks, I have to roll to confirm it. No, but, uh, get yeah. out of here. Get no, and I rolled. I rolled a natural one on the confirm. So oh, wow, uh, that's fifty bucks to. Uh, that's our, fifty uh, bucks. Charity. <laughs> 
Whoa. And 50 uh, bucks to direct to relief. I come in and soak up all these bad rolls for Troy <laughs> as a scab when he could save all the good rolls for you guys later. The old surprise round fumble. That's uh, $50 to direct relief. Uh, starting strong on the night here. Uh, <laughs> Joe, uh, you want to just, you got something for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we can do a fan fun bony. Why not? Uh, all right, let's, bony? let's do uh, Cody from Pekin, Illinois. Uh, you even impress yourself. Oh, for God's sakes. I mean, of all these, so I have to pick the weapon one. All right, we're going to have to skip that. Uh, That's what these things look like, by the way. Oh, look at these. Gee. Are they oh. that big? Uh, no, no, they're they're appropriately sized. They're small. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, okay. I uh, like got a non-weapon one. This one from Trey in Colorado Springs. <clears throat> no. Hey, Trey. S no, seriously, I can do this. Your attack whiffs so badly and you are utterly embarrassed in front of your friends. Determined now, determined now to prove your martial prowess to your fellows, you will attack again and again until you get it right. You must attempt the exact same attack against the exact same creature again and again on your next turns, regardless of efficacy or uh, effect on spell slots or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay. So yeah. Uh, so he's embarrassed in front of his other stinging plant threat. Yes, we exactly. We embarrassed a plant. Yes, so you bet. he basically just keeps attacking uh, Voldriff. <laughs> right, thanks, thanks worse. Charity. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that was a surprise round. That was the only one that got off. The other one jumped out because you guys didn't hear that either. Uh, so it's top of round one, and it's Alfonso's turn. Everybody's got weapons out and ready to go, and I'm going to crack a beer. Nice. Crack a beer. Uh, all right, uh, weapons out and ready to go. Let's see. Um, I'm just Alfonso is just going to move up behind uh, Voldriff. Can I stand in that space, or is that a problem? Uh, right behind Voldriff, but on the edge of the water. Yeah. Uh, is it more water than space, or more space than water? It's more space than water. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I will move up there and uh, just try to stab at this plant that is uh, that came out next to Voldriff. Okay. Uh, that, that reared its ugly head. Real quick, uh, real quick Ooh, stab. Right that on is, the edge there. I know. That is a 17 to hit? 17 hits. All right, uh, six points of damage. Okay, what kind of we weapon do you have? The rapier, it's slashing? Uh, it's piercing. Piercing. Okay, so you notice uh, that not all of that goes through. Okay. It's got some sort of damage reduction against your Oh, 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 yeah, weapon. you know what? Uh, speaking of which, let me do that uh, knowledge check then. What is the... Uh, what would it be? Would it be nature, or is it? Wouldn't be nature. Uh, right? For this guy, knowledge nature, yeah. Oh, it is. Okay, and it has dr against piercing. Interesting. Oh, there we go. Twenty-seven. Knowledge. Twenty-seven. Nature. I can give you a ton of information. This is a creature known as a mire nettle. Um, they have dr five uh, slashing and bludgeoning cuts through it. Ah. Uh, okay. They. Uh, they uh, can have uh, they have four attacks with their stingers, but they can also do a ranged thorn attack. That when it hits, it can inflict uh, pain on you, which could, if you fail your fortitude save, stagger you because it hits wow. you. Wow! So, uh, so yeah, they're not like the, the dr is going to keep them around for a little while, but you want to get them, you want to get rid of them before they start inflicting pain. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, he'll, he'll share this with the group loudly uh, and clearly uh, and be like, my weapon is uh, so useless against this creature. You must take it out, Crystal Ghost. And uh, what is your name? Voldriff. Voldriff, yes, that's it. Quick. The new Voldriff. guy. Yes, hop to Voldriff. Uh, look smart. Uh, all right, and it is Braven's turn. Uh, Braven will reach out to the water peeing out of the middle of the room and will make it move and swirl all around him until make it, it move, a buddy. shield. Make it move. And then he puts both of his hands together, creating a fist from this ocean water right from him and shoots it out from him. A bludgeoning attack at the it's a water fist. Middle, directly across from him. Uh, natural one. Oh, my oh, God. That's man. two, dude. That's two. Wow. Mark it, dude. That's and two for direct relief. you only have one relief. attack, right? So that is, yeah, that's 100 bucks of direct relief already. You know what? It makes fumbling a lot better. You kind of have does. It. It sucks that <laughs> it I really uh, does. can't hit the broadside of a barn, but 100 bucks. And I took on a point relief. of burn while doing that kinetic fist attack. So uh, <laughs> It's really bad. It's, bad. No, it's good, though. It increases my AC. So. Oh, 
Oh, really? Yeah, I go into elemental overflow, uh, basically. Um, so when I take burn, my body surges with power and it increases certain uh, effects. Oh, see, I thought it was because you burned and your skin got really hard and like, like armor. Hmm. That's not that's not it. No, it's basically I'm, I'm rotating water fast enough around me to where it could knock away uh, swings and projectiles thrown at me. Pretty effing cool. Let's talk about the Crystal Ghost. Crystal, what do you got? Hold on a I'm second. Stuck he here fumbled. In the he, hold on. He fumbled. Oh, oh, it's a fa- oh that's right. Yeah. Fan fumbled. Hey, Joe, why do you let the Let's GM start. GM? Buddy. I was too <laughs> busy. How do you let Troy do his job? <laughs> too busy racking up 50s for direct relief. I got too excited that something bad's going to happen to Grant. Oh, uh, Grant, this is bad. Josh. From Wollongong, Australia, International Edition Fomboni, the rats. International. The rats. The rats. Your attack should have connected, but strangely, it passed right through your target. The heated, the heated combat has unleashed some hidden potential in your target. Oh my God! The target gains the incorporeal property for one round. No oh save. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, no. That is awful. <laughs> so your magic made this fucking thing incorporeal for one round. <laughs> I love that. I love that mishap. Uh, uh, the rats. The rats. <laughs> that is old wow. school GCP right there. So until the beginning of uh, Braven's next turn, that is an incorporeal Meyer nettle. The one uh, up at the top, yeah? Yeah. Does that change your tactics, the Crystal Ghost? I think that changes the CR of this encounter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it truly does. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Australia. I think so, yeah. <laughs> All right. So can I, would I? would you be willing to let me roll acrobatics to hop up on this crate in front yeah, of man. me? man. Dude, this All is right. Pathfinder. You can do anything your imagination uh, can think of. My imagination... Wait, Thanks Troy, so. can you say that one more time? I want to put that down on the back of a book. This is Pathfinder. You can do uh-huh. anything, anything your imagination, your imagination can think of. <laughs> I might tighten that up, but that's pretty good. That's pretty send good. It. Eric, I would send it off to the editors first, but I, you know, yeah, yeah, you yeah. do yeah. you. We're going to tighten Maybe. it up, but that's a good start. I thought of going with dream instead of think, but Ooh. You know, Ooh. anything you can dream of. You could also really... just make it anything you can imagine and just shorten the whole thing. That's fewer words. Yeah. Or anything you In can path, imagine. Path the big brain on Matthew. Very good. This is Pathfinder, you can do anything you can imagine. All right, you guys. Trademark. So, but but no, you cannot jump on the crew. Wait, really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Go ahead. Roll okay. acrobatics, DC thirty. Uh, I roll a natty. I roll a natty nineteen, but I do not get a thirty. I get twenty three. Oh, oh, you fall. So no, you're oh. fine. You get up there He's with ease. You land okay. on one toe. The crystal ghost hops up and then takes a swing with her glass longsword. At Voldreth? No, at the, the Meyer Nettle. Oh, good, good. Uh, that is a 18 to hit. That is a big old hit. Yeah. I'm go. gonna roll damage with crystal. my crystal D8. Ooh. Ooh. Does that work for, for the professor as well? The, who's, what professor? Do you see a professor here? Oh. I, don't, I don't see any professor here. Uh, you, what are you talking about, you fool? The professor has been gone for hours. Please. <laughs> that's six points of slashing damage. Ooh, you know, earlier I had a crystal light, but that's a crystal heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you had a crystal light earlier? Really? Yeah, I was really, I read a post last week. It was like, oh, I had a crystal light. And I was like, man, I really want a crystal light. So I went to the grocery <laughs> store. I got a little fucking thing of crystal light. Wow. Wow. Anyways. Seven? Six points go through. It was delicious, man. They're I'm too it. scared to go to the grocery store for meat or vegetables, for <laughs> produce or snack. Eggs. And you go to the supermarket <laughs> in, by the way, upstate New York, one of the most horrifying yeah. places on earth for Crystal Light. Well, that wasn't my the main thrust of my trip. <laughs> <laughs> it's just when I passed the Crystal Light aisle, they have their own aisle. I, uh, I was like, you know what? Sponsored. I'm going to get 12 packets and <laughs> see what happens. Yeah, actually, Crystal went. Light. He actually went to get a three packets of Bubblicious bubble gum because he was also reading a comic book at the time. And the Crystal Light was just secondary to his. You if got you home. Drink and... Crystal Light. You can do anything you can imagine. He gets home and Wait, his wife's like, "Where's the baby light. food, Troy? Where's the baby food? What's all this Crystal Light? How are we gonna feed our son?" <laughs> you know what? Next week I'm gonna have a Crystal Light on air. They're fucking delicious. Toss a little vodka in there, a little goose and light. Oh are you going to have a little pop chips followed by a little crystal light? I'll call it the crystal light special. Just gray goose and crystal light. Oh, Ooh, I like call it. The crystal goose. The crystal goose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Matthew! 
Matthew, you get a bottle cap. That was yeah, fun. that was hey. good, dude. You, and you named it. a drink, the Crystal Goose. <laughs> Everyone, I, we don't encourage drinking here on the show, but if you got some goose at home and some Crystal Light, start whipping up some Crystal Goose and get twisted. <laughs> All right, moving right along. I think you here. stole that slogan. <laughs> it is Voldrift's turn. Voldrift. All right. Uh, uh, this Vold- is pretty nasty here. This is an incorporeal Myron nettle just entered the fight. Yeah, but I'm not. There's a real Meyer nettle in between me and that, is there not? Yeah, there sure is. So I will take my battle axe in one hand, heft it over my shoulder, and say, Well, times are tough. I'm not above a little yard work. And I'm just going to swing down <laughs> with a slashing attack. Uh, I get a 14, uh, AC 14. AC 14 is going to do it. Oh, yes. beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, in that dude. case, on the I nose, hit, I hit for 13 points of damage. Whoa. I damage that bastard. And that is uh, that is slashing damage. It that sure thing is, my friend. Is on its last legs, cuts through the DR, just <laughs> boom, thorns splinter off everywhere. It is barely standing. However, it is still standing enough for They're it to not do so tough. Four attacks. I'm worried about that. And so it has talk. to go after Voldrift, right? It has to go. Yeah, that's right. It yeah. does have to go after Voldrift. So Thanks let's do four <laughs> stingers against Voldrift. First attack. Very low chance to hit. 13. Miss. Second attack. 10. Miss. Th- third attack. 13 again. Come on, LaValle, you son of a bitch. Another 13. I rolled three 13s and a 10. Miss, you miss. Miss. miss, miss, miss. Not even However, close. The incorporeal one, he's upset. He's upset because he preferred being corporeal. Uh, <laughs> because he was how, made more powerful. However, he is going to actually do a spray of thorns that's going to hit everyone in the room. Uh, oh, dear. Let me just see. So there's a ranged attack against... Oh, no. Any target within 60 feet. So it's just one target. So it's going to go against Braven. He's going to stay right where he is and try and hit Braven. Well, now that he's incorporeal, does that matter? Like, does he fire an incorporeal thorn, or does it become corporeal when it leaves him? That's an interesting question. Uh, I don't care enough to look it up. I'm looking uh, it up right now. I mean, corporeal creatures don't do physical attacks. Like, they don't deal physical damage. I'm pretty That's sure. That's true. I, I, so this would be, I think it's going to be a miss anyways, 14 to hit. That's a miss. Yeah, so that's interesting. It would be an incorporeal thorn. Would it just have not hurt him? Or no, it would be like... Does I believe it actually, against, I believe it actually does. Thorns. It's going to hurt him. It's going to hurt him. It just actually, sucks his it strength it. out. <laughs> right, it but ign- it doesn't... It, it doesn't ignores all of a sudden... natural armor, armor shields, and... and oh, that, that could be bad. Yeah. An incorporeal creature's attacks pass through natural armor, armor, and shields, although deflection bonuses and force effects work normally against it. All right, so take away your... You don't have a natural armor, right? Or do you do from that little birdie burn? Um, field of burn? No, I'm just trying to... It's a shield bonus. You got that shield uh, bone? Get bone. that out of here. Get rid of that yeah. shield bone. You get just that right out of here. Get rid of that no arm shield bone. bones here. No this is side quest, bone. side sesh. Get that armor bone out. Get that shield bone out. Get that gnat uh-huh. bone out. Get it out. All right. All right. All right. You don't yeah. even get a gnat bone? <laughs> no. No gnat bone, Mona. No gnat wow. bone. Wow. It That's ignores amazing. the gnat bone. How could you ignore you the gnat bone? You get a deaf bl- uh, bone, though, right? A deflection bone, I think you, you would You do get the deaf bone, yeah. And your, and your force bone. You keep your force bone. <laughs> the deaf bone and the force bone you get to keep. <laughs> Grant, right. four, will 14 hit you basically naked body? It will precisely hit me with that. Oh, bonus. no. Let's get out the D20s for damage. What? No, I'm kidding. It's D10s. No. Uh, here we go. <laughs> All right. Only three points of damage. However, I need you to roll a fortitude save. Oh, this no. thing just swoom, it hits you. It's got, a, it's got a toxin inside of it. It hits you for only three An points incorporeal of damage. poison. Oh, it's the worst kind. Incorp poison bone. Raven gets hit by this incorporeal thorn and he's confused as to why it hurts him. But after he gets over that, he steals himself against it with a 25 fortitude save. Oh, oh. God. What'd you roll, a natty 20 or a natty 19? 17. He crushes a 14-gallon ale afterwards as well. <laughs> boom. I can't even it. do that. Uh, <laughs> Put his no, Polaroid I, I on the a, cave wall. 
I have a 20 constitution. Beautiful. So you are not affected by the toxins of this thing. You're too strong. You're too tough. You guys survive through one round of these guys and a surprise round from one of them. It's top of next round, and it is Alfonso's turn. I'm sorry. I need you to run that back. You have a 20 constitution. <laughs> yeah. Are all the other stats <laughs> seven? Uh, I have you one. punt on strength, intelligence. I have, I have a. It's a 10, 16, 20, 10, 10, 8. He did a 40 point build. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, thanks for that. Nobody said a 40 point build. Nobody said he couldn't. It's side quest, side sesh. No rules. Yeah. No Hob rules at the uh, side quest, side sesh. Hobgoblin's um, only detriment is that they are shunned by society, and I have a nice little magical cap to take care of that. So. Just your classic extreme high fantasy 40 point build. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. It was, technically, <laughs> technically, it's a 42 point build. <laughs> Alfonso, you're up. Grant, in my office tomorrow morning. Uh, jeez, yeah, I'm I'm in a I'm in a rough spot here. I'm just gonna keep attacking and hope to do enough damage. Hope um, for the best, yeah. Uh, attack again. Oh, that is a miss with a natural two, natty two. So, not Wah! great, not great. Uh, boss, creature is so wily. Wah! And he tries to stab out of, dodges out of the way, misses. And then I'm going to, one. Uh, then I'm going to take a five foot step back. Five foot step back. It is Braven's turn. All of a sudden, this thing becomes corporeal. Uh, I like that idea that the magic was so powerful, it yeah. just like fucked up. Warped and made the energy. Yeah. yeah, I love magic fumbles for that reason. Uh, so, Braven, this thing is corporeal now. It hits you. You were able to withstand the poison. What do you want to do? Uh, Braven will drop the pick he's holding in his other hands to make both hands free, and he will stomp down his right heel as he gathers power around himself, and a large boom happens and fills the room. That prevents the burn from happening as he draws another kinetic fist in between his hands to shoot out at this now corporeal Meyer Nettle. Let's get it, baby. Shit. Uh, 13 to hit. <laughs> Against uh, flat, regular, uh, AC. regular AC, just misses. Just misses. Boom! Hits the wall behind one day, it. One day he's going to hit, and that's going to be Who are you, and where is Grant? I uh know. -huh. <laughs> Grant didn't show up. For side queer sides here. I don't. Listen, at least I don't lie when no one's looking. That's true, and we appreciate that. Um, speaking of liars, Crystal Ghost, you're up. <laughs> God. I'm going to ignore that. Uh, and take a take a swing everything at your Meyer nettle. Uh, Natty sixteen. I assume Ooh, that hits. She'll do. She'll do just fine. Uh, that is ten points of slashing damage. And that Meyer nettle is toast. Nice. Oh. All right, nice. you got one down, one to go. But Braven has not had good luck with that one to the north. Crystal uh, Ghost, do you want to uh, sidestep, jump onto another uh, little Jimmy John there, or what do you want to do? I would say, could you? Would you let me run across the uh, the crates? <sighs> that is rule of cool. And as Acrobatic they say, check? in Pathfinder, you can do anything you can Im imagine. That's what so, they say. Uh, Roll a acrobatics check. Do you have the speed to do it? What's your speed? 30? 30. All right. Acrobatics, you got to pass it to move half speed. I'm going to say if you fail by five or more, you're going to fall in that water. I rolled a natty 18, so that's 22. <laughs> Zip, sop, soup. You get Zip, all the way across. Zip, that's just fun. You know what? That's just fun. That's, that's just plain Thursday just night. That's fun. I don't know where you guys grew up, but that's fun where I grew up. Uh, Voldrif, you are up. You see the crystal ghost just stabby, stabby, and then flip, 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 flip across the boxes. She's pretty cool. She's a good ghost. That is amazing. Is it my turn? Yes, it is. All right, then I'm going to kind of like follow that movement, but just still on the ground, and then shift over here to take a flanking position. Flank and then I'm going to uh, do an uh, opposite swing to my last one with my battle axe. This guy's cornered. And this time I'm going to get a 19 uh, plus yeah. two, so 21. That will hit. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to do, uh, sorry, uh, 12 points of damage this time. 12 points of damage. Yep. Phenomenal. Uh, okay. All right. So the first hit on this thing really, uh, really levels it. Uh, it looks like it's in bad shape. It is, I yell however, loud enough for people in another room to hear. <laughs> they all come running in. Uh, 
wielding weapons. Uh, I'm gonna roll a d6 here. One, two, three is Voldrif. Four, five, six is the Crystal Ghost. Okay. Let's just see. Looks like it's gonna be Voldrif. Uh, should we go back to the four? Let's go back to four attacks. Didn't hit the first time. I have a feeling there's a natural 20 coming. You know what? The green hasn't been really doing it today. Let's go with this little white opalite here. Why don't okay. you try Ooh. a d12? You know what? I'll try. Oh, you almost got me. Ah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ah. You bugs bunnied me. All right, first attack, 17 to hit. Miss. Oh, I got half play, baby. To, I, I spent all my it. money on armor and one weapon, so. <laughs> <laughs> one of these is going to be a natural you 20. Didn't, you didn't get any trail rations? No. <laughs> That's no, why I needed No beer. water skin? There's nope, some in the crate. Uh, natural 2 yeah, on the second attack. I've got a whole collection of that shit here. Uh, natural 2 on the second attack. Third uh, roll was cracked. Next roll is a natty 19. That's going to be a 23 to hit. That is going to hit. That's going to be three points of damage. Final attack. Oh, I pulled a grant out of the box. Got to call my backup die in. Uh, natural three. Damn it! All right, so, so only one points? of the four attacks. Yeah, three points. And then yeah. I'll have it take a five foot step uh, down just to. Do I need? Do yeah, I need to make a save? Away. Uh, no, that was just its stinger, not its okay. uh, thorn dart. Ah, right, got, just a scratch. Don't guys, worry, mates. If it hits you, it barely hits. Guys are in good shape here, and it's Alfonso's turn. Uh, yes, we are looking rather in good shape. I don't know why I would risk personal injury at this point. Uh, I'm going to delay. You're going to delay. Okay. It is Braven's turn. Braven has been really rock solid uh, from the start of the combat. I think that this is his fight to win. Yeah, you know... He might as well uh, not fix something if it's not broken. So he's going to gather power one more time and form an aquatic fist to shoot out of his mind. No, come on, baby. Times the charm. Come on, baby. 20 to hit. That's a hit. Yeah, there you go, dude. All right. For damage, we're talking about 18 points of bludgeoning water damage. Oh, oh, it's very, very dead. Yes! <laughs> it's so... Splinters go so everywhere. Oh, very, very, very dead. Oh, wow. <laughs> Braven's just breathing heavily. <sighs> Braven! Well or should done, I say Jim. hobby? Did you, I didn't know you had it in you. That's my that's hobby. <laughs> that's, that's our hobby. That's what we always say. Hobby. Braven blushes and demures at being called Javi in this moment. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can actually see it on your 4K camera. <laughs> you see every bit of that expression. So much blush. Uh, all right. So you're able to overcome these two mire nettles. You rolled a 27 on your knowledge nature, Alfonso. Yeah. Now that you're out of, like, uh, fight or flight mode, you can really kind of start recalling knowledge about these things. And what would they be doing here? Yeah, I mean they're mire, they're called mire nettles for a reason. They're normally found in mires in swamps, uh, but some people will uh, use them as um, like to mark territorial boundaries or to uh, use them as like guards. Hmm. You know, it's like a safety precaution, um, and they feed on fish and amphibians and whatnot, so perhaps this hole in the floor was giving them all the nourishment they needed, and all they had to do was keep the room safe. But weren't they in the crates, or did I dream that? They were. One of them was in the crate that you were in, and then the other one popped out from behind the crate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Doing, okay. No doing, Can I just, hiding, to, just to satisfy a bit of curiosity, I'm going to take a closer look at the crates. That Were they broken open, or were they just lifted open? Um, so three out of the four of them, uh, the lid was a jar on it. Okay. Um, like it, it's, they're not hiding anything in there. And then one of them, it, you have to actually pop. Okay. It open. So they were just lifted open. Nobody crushed yeah. them open or anything. Like, no, okay. No. And there's one that to this, to this moment, we still haven't opened. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to take the edge of my battle axe and pop that thing open. You pop that thing open and, uh, there are weapons inside weapons and oh. armor, uh, nothing oh, fancy, nice. uh, uh, Braven, if you're like, oh, I'm assuming you have some sort of detect magic. Yeah, you don't detect any magic, um, but there's uh, swords, there are bows, there are crossbows, uh, there are bolts. Are they um, mismatched, like yeah. the clothes? Mm -hmm. And again, I, I don't think we ever got a chance to do this. Um, I'm, I'm going to keep looking for blood stains or anything on the clothes. I'm trying to get a sense of if these are like reclaimed from a raid or something like that. 
Sure. Uh, roll. Well, I mean, you can just you don't have to roll a perception. Is there blood on this? Right. Uh, yeah. Some of them are blood stains. Some of them aren't. Okay. Yeah. There's no well. pattern, no discernible pattern between which ones are and which ones aren't. And can the weapons I... are. Some of them have blood on them, and some of them don't. So. It, there's no real uh, my working hypothesis is that this is like the gear and clothes of people who have been you know attacked or you know like a, a, a raid on a caravan or something is there anything mm -hmm. that i can see here that doesn't fit that hypothesis but why put them uh, in crates particularly the clothing why why indeed Could yeah I... It, Sorry, I was just just to answer um voldriff uh no, there's there's no reason you don't think that, but you don't also, you also don't feel like that's that's the right. I'm not answer. asking for a confirmation yeah. of that. I'm just yeah. asking if there's anything that is incongruous. Certainly very possible. I mean, you know, you're dealing with the uh, people that deal in drugs. It's very possible right. they've got some other things going on. Okay. Well, I feel like perhaps these creatures were designed to be in the crate. They they are protecting something. Something yeah. within the crate that maybe someone else stole. I don't know. And as he's saying, and he's sort of looking at the pool uh, in the middle sort of like running his foot along the edge of it now is that like a deep pool or is that just like a little puddle of water that's an inch deep like what uh no it looks like it goes straight into the ocean you don't have uh, oh it's a uh, hole it's a straight yeah, up a, hole it's a hole. like a blowhole kind of a yeah because imagine this grotto is on the rocks but like the ocean probably goes underneath uh this area as well so if you crack it open it's flowing through there now it might not be super deep or you might be able to swim underneath the rocks to get out to the ocean from there as well I wonder if uh, someone came through here uh, raiding these crates behind the back of who was guarding them. I don't know. Uh, does, does anybody swim? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, me, no, me neither. Uh, uh, can I just do, sorry, can I just do a perception in the water uh, real yeah. quick? Just look closely, see if I can see anything on the, see if I can see a bottom or. Yeah. Um, oh, jeez. 31. 31. Uh, no, you don't see a bottom. Okay. Um, and I don't see anything else. I just see flowing dirt. Is it dirty ocean You'll water? You'll see a fish. With 31, you see a fish here and there. Maybe but I can see eel. like a couple eel. feet into it. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. You just don't see a bottom. All right. Um, the hmm. water's just coming up, going down with the tide. Curious. Um, all right. Is there anything we could drop in? A light, like... Is they, can anyone cast light on a rock or something to see if we can see that, see our way down or something like that? No. Um, I am happy to no. try. I don't to even take have a, a rock. Uh, I will try to take a look. Uh, I'm going to jump in the water. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'll I'll sheathe my rapier. The rapier. And uh, and I'm just gonna jump in. Okay. What, you know what I mean? Just jump in. Happy yeah, no, I know what you mean. You. Happy to offer in. you a silk rope. I, I did spend some money on useless other pack items, unlike Eric. If you want a rope. Yes. Old oh yeah. Rope. That's a good idea. Good thinking. All right. So you throw a rope and you jump in. And what's your goal here? To find bottom or to see what you can see? Uh, yeah, I'll start with finding bottom and then boom, just look, like looking around. It's gonna be hard to see underwater. I don't have great vision but i have really good perception so if i hear anything if i s i'm not gonna smell anything but uh right. but I'll, I'll look for bottom as well <clears throat> all right you jump in and roll a perception check <clears throat> uh oh, on the other side of the coin there 16 16 while the tide is strong enough for you to not be like you don't feel like you're being uh pulled uh, it's strong enough to have the water be uh, coming in and out of this hole it's not pulling you or, or hurting you um so the water is not hard for you to swim against with a 16 you can see about 50 feet or so down you see bottom um and then Whoa. from there it slopes down and out but sure enough it looks like you could swim out to the ocean from here oh, oh so which would explain why there's fish yes perhaps this is the answer to the riddle of riddle port and we'll see you next week. I don't Stop. think so. No. Uh, all right, you see his hands, his wet hands come back up on the edge, and then he pulls himself up. And um, there's a manatee on your back. It is, uh, oh, get this thing off my back. Oh, God. Oh, God. Be gone. Be gone, uh, Dugong. I see he explains what he saw. 
there's uh, definitely a way in uh, here to strike out at these crates. Perhaps that's what they did. I don't know. That's what they did. Perhaps that's what they did. Oh, no, not so far. <laughs> um, I'm Alfonso. I don't know what to do. Well, what we do you can think, always... Crystal Ghost? We should... Let's proceed into the other the other fork of the road and see what I we agree. find. Yes. All right. Uh, after you. We're supposed to have a contact here, after all. Uh, oh, okay. Did I misunderstand something? This isn't the only thing that's here. There's openings in this other room. There's openings. Yeah. Okay, I missed yeah. that. Okay. Downstairs. Right. Yeah, there's. I thought that was another open room. Voldrick or... just wanted to clear this off before we went in deep. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yes. Yes. Let us let us go deeper. And he's just sopping wet <laughs> as he's walking along. Okay. Um, all right. So you go into the next room. All four of you. The sure. one that uh, Braven scouted out. Um, or well, you guys are zipping across there to the square room. Um, however. Before you pass into that room, if you remember, Braven had uh, oh. screwed it to the north and oh, then no. went around. But watching your pawns uh, zip across there, not all of you did that. Uh, let's say Voldriff uh, just stampeded right across the middle of the room, as his pawn did. And as you do so, there's a loud boom sound oh. Oh, uh, no. that echoes throughout the chamber. Um Everyone roll a fortitude save. Fortitude save. Oh, fortitude. I wonder if Grant will be okay. Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Uh, all right, what's 24 for Grant. Okay. Uh, what about the Crystal Ghost? Uh, 18. 18. Okay. And uh, Alfonso? Fourteen, just passed. Nice. And Voldriff. Is it a spell or a spell-like ability? <laughs> yes. It is. <laughs> then I got a fourteen. Ah, you also just passed. Woo! Now here's here's the thing that uh, stops all of you from being stunned from this sound burst. Ooh, However, it geez. doesn't stop you from taking Take the sonic damage. damage. Ooh, ouch. Uh, We'll say Braven takes two points. Uh, the Crystal Ghost takes seven. Oh. Uh, Alfonso takes five, and Voldriff takes five. Oh, ouch. ouch. Oh, those are great damage rolls, Troy. I really like them. You like those, I like Grant? How they break down. Uh, I like rolling them all individually just to see what happens. Um, uh, wow. Imagine, because were you all stampeded in the next room? I figured you were all at different points away from the yeah. middle where Voldriff set it off. So this boom burst of sound comes out all of you are able to withstand against the stunning property but the, the sound is so loud you actually take sonic damage from it as you enter the next room the antechamber with that trap in it opens into this large square hall um it has exits on all four sides one of them being the the entrance that you just used uh, there are cracks running along the floor um, that give the impression that perhaps this room was used for as a gathering place or a, a great hall long ago, but whatever its original purpose was, uh, it's not what it's being used for now. There are four small torches, as Braven saw on his scouting mission, providing uh, light throughout the room. What do you do? Four exits. Um, well, let us do? let us go to the north, and uh, it would be past where the crates were. Perhaps that gives us somewhere to start, at least. All right. To the north it is. You uh, start to walk towards the north, and as you do, you hear this very faint whimpering sound. At first, it sounds like the whimpering of a child maybe in a room nearby but you quickly get disoriented to where you can't quite tell where that sound is even coming from maybe it's behind you from where you just came but you look that way and now you're not sure that you came in the hallway that you walked through you feel like maybe I, you walked through the opposite and you're oh, all no. turned around I and as it. it is happening you the whimpering is getting louder and louder and now instead of a child's <laughs> cries it sounds like 
men in agony all like uh, overlapping each other and echoing in your minds. And as that is happening, two creatures just boom, boom, appear out of thin air. They are long. They're like six feet long, tall each. I say long because they're more long than they are like, oh, oh they're tall. They're just like these long, thin, gaunt, grayish, gray-skinned creatures. Belters. Although they, they have these like manic-looking grins uh, like pasted on their face, but uh, they're both sobbing a long stream of tears oh, that just God. passes past their manic grin, goes down to their body and coats their entire body, and including a, a thin layer of frost on their stomach, and they just <laughs> wink into existence in the room. Roll for initiative. Oh, my God. Oh, I have no geez. idea what this is. That's what oh. I look like when we're not recording. <laughs> that is horrible, man. Let me just say, you're going to want to be at the after party after this tonight. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Oh, my God. <laughs> this is nuts. This is nuts. Nuts. This is, this is nuts. This uh, is nuts. Oh, man. Check this oh, out. Oh, boy. Uh, God, I have so much trouble doing uh, math right now, but uh, let's talk about guys um what did you get alfonso uh alfonso rolled his second natty 19 of the night on initiative for hot. another 23 <laughs> hot braven 13 lucky number 13 oh 13 for braven crystal ghost 15 15 for crystal ghost voldriff four four for voldriff four all right, let me show you these creatures. Now, Eric, I love having you in the room for a number of reasons. But yeah. one, when I explain a creature to you and you're like, I don't know what that is. I do not know what this is. So let's play the it game. Gives Troy of, such a natural high. Once you see it, uh, yeah. if you recognize it, because this is the actual artwork. Does that ring any bells for you? Oh, my God. How um, cool is that? that is oh, hold on. Ah, uh, Troy, Troy, stop moving it. Leave it alone for a second. I gotta zoom in on it so everybody can see it. Oh, Yikes, oh that man. is amazing! I, I still don't really. I still am not sure what this is. I can't remember it. Oh, I guess we're gonna find out together. I guess we're gonna find out, just like old friends. Uh, yeah. Well, it is round one. These things are amazing, and it is Alfonso's turn. Alfonso, you got the jump on them, while none of your allies did. All right, uh, Eric. Let's see if we can help you out. Uh, I'll do a knowledge yeah. check. I'll do, uh, I'll do that. I'll do a knowledge check. Um, it's going to be knowledge arcana. Okay. Knowledge arcan, natural one. Oh, excuse me. Well, it doesn't matter. It wasn't arcana, but uh, natural oh, one. I better you know. re-roll it then. I better re-roll it then if it's not Nothing. arcana. Uh, uh, yes, I'm so sorry. Uh, all right, then uh, I'm going to do you a perception. You think that they are uh, dire rats. Oh, uh, come on. All right, I'm going to do a perception check to see if they're corporeal or not. Okay. Uh, that is a 23. They appear to be corporeal. Um, they just appear to be awful. And again, giant glued on, like, wide smile and just a stream of tears covering their whole body. How, how did they appear, Troy? Did they come up out of the ground or something? No, or? they just winked into existence. Oh, okay. Yikes. Oh, yeah. even better. Great. Yeah, cool. <laughs> even, even better. Oh, man. This what are you is, thinking, Alfonso? This is tough. Uh, Alfonso! Alfonso! Alfonso. Alfonso. Uh, Moria! I'm trying to think if I should take this time to do... Uh, yeah, I, I just don't know anything about them, so... Damn it. Uh, I will take a five-foot step and attack okay. it. I'll just try like stabbing it. it first. Yeah, let's or, just see what happens. Oh, come on, man. I hate being responsible for the actual game map. <laughs> it's like I screw up and then everybody... Gets a bad experience. All right, so I step up and then I stab. Uh, See the natural stab. one. Oh! <laughs> Line him the half up. That's 150 bucks to direct relief. Take that relief. Never been so wow. pumped for a fumble in my life. Uh, Man, that, is a, that is a big fan fumble. A, a thumbs up from Matty Caps. Oh, jeez. Uh, Okay. Wow. Let's see. This wow. one from James in Spring, Texas. Spring, Texas. Spring, Texas. You ever heard of Spring? Hi, James. 
Grant? New York City? That's all I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, what did I just see? Your failure is so spectacular. All right, just take it easy. Your failure is so spectacular that your closest ally in sight simply cannot believe it. Oh, God. Your, your closest ally who can see you, Crystal Ghost, must succeed at a will save or become dazed for one round as they struggle Come to comprehend on, no, the depth no, of your no. failure. You, you are stunned for one round or dazed with a successful will save. God. Why, All right. why if you're are you successful, you're dazed? If I'm successful, I'm dazed. Okay. 22 will save. All right, so you're fine. You yeah, get over right. it. You get over the shock. Uh, that is a 10. That's a fail. So I'm fucking stunned. I drop my weapon at my failure. And just like, Duh! I have never felt so bad in my life. How could this happen? Fantastic. Well, you know what? I actually kind of like it specifically because of how horrified I, Joe, as a player am of these creatures. So, like, I could totally see this being like, what is this thing? And then I go to stab at it and just, like, it freaks me out completely and I get stunned. Uh... All right, the uh, the one that you just attacked is going to return the favor with, uh, let's say, three attacks. Oh, uh, man. All these guys. Let's start yeah, with wow. the Racking them bite, up. A, bite attack here. Rolling absolute shit. 14 to hit. Uh, oh, sorry. You know what? I got to put on stunned. Um, oh, this is so, this is so funny and classic Joe. Like, I, oh, ha I, know, I had 14 new would stuff. never hit. I had new stuff I wanted to unleash with, like, uh, like uh, getting hit and stuff like that, like abilities I have. I can't do any of it while stunned. Can't do it. And my can't AC is 13 when I'm stunned. Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> it, just no. it just dropped by five. Oh, this is, this is real bad. Uh, all right, so that's three points of regular damage, four points of acid damage. <gasps> now let's talk about the poison uh, that is coursing through your veins. Uh, oh man, that is so bad, Joe. That is so very, so very bad. bad. Let me make sure that, yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah, all right, go ahead and roll a fortitude save. Uh, okay, oh man. That doesn't get a lot bigger than this, so I'm gonna do a little, do a little Atlanta die. I never showed anybody, so this is the beautiful case I got in Atlanta. I mentioned it on the show. But how beautiful is that case? That's cool. It has it, it. It holds a majestic D20 that I use for the worst possible situations. Uh, fortitude save, Natty 17 for a 17. <laughs> so, You're all wow. right. Okay. That's Woo. good. Uh, oh, thank two, you. Atlanta die. Two claws. 22 on the first claw. Jesus. That's going to be uh, four points of regular and two points of acid. Oh my God. And then the they final have this on every attack. The final claw, I keep getting uh, oh, Natty 19 on the final claw. That's going to be uh, three points of regular, three points of acid. Ooh, all Holy three. Bite, crap. claw, claw. This is insane, dude. I am at exactly zero. You oh. are staggered. How, how, like, <laughs> can you get... Can you get less lucky than that? Like, I mean, the good news just is a negative, your weapon give me a negative is, one. Give me a negative you drop one. Drop your weapon. Don't forget you dropped your weapon. Staggered and you dropped your weapon. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Aaron, All right. by, Thank is you, Vulture. Is your character by chance a cleric? Oh, God. No. So bad. No. So bad. All right. Here's what the guy near Braven is going to do. He's going to take a five-foot step, and then as a move equivalent action, he is going to coat his claws in his tears. He oh starts my God. rubbing his claws on his tears, and they now glisten with the same poison that his bite does. As an immediate action, as that happens, Braven whips out the same water shield. He sucks all the water that has soaked Alfonso after he drips into the ocean, and it <laughs> Alfonso whips gets, like, around air dry. Him. <laughs> Yeah, he's going through a car wash. So what is this, immediate action? Uh, immediate AC action. Buff? Uh, no, not HTP buff. Uh, it adds plus three to my shield uh, bonus plus three to your shield bone. All right, you're gonna need it because this guy's got three attacks and they all can deal poison now that he has coated his claws and his tears. Here comes the bite. That is gonna be a 17. Yes. Oh my God, that's a enormous. huge, dude, huge shield bone. That is all such right. a good shield bone. 
claw your... number one. 14 misses. Final claw. I mean, this is absolutely the Grant and Joe. Uh, you can't draw it up more. Welcome Grant to the and Grant and Joe hour, 9 to 10 p.m. 12 on the final attack misses. So misses Beautiful. on Bike Claw Claw after his buddy does hit, hit, hit. Wait a minute. Did you take a move equivalent action and a full round attack? Five foot step. Five foot step, oh. and then I use my move equivalent to do that coat. So then you well, only like, get one attack, right? No, no. So no. only get one attack, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, I yeah. You would still only yeah. get one attack. Yeah. Right. One attack. Yeah. Unless it was a swift it action. If it's not a swift action. Oh, so I wanted to coat myself. The thing I wanted to avoid was the attack of opportunity. So I wanted to use the move equivalent to coat, but still be able to take the five foot step. But I still only get one attack. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I didn't hit you anyways. But thank you, Matthew, for keeping us honest. And in your bottle cap. Uh, big <laughs> round for you guys here. Uh, it is the Crystal Ghost turn. Alfonso, useless right now. Braven yeah. may be the hero of this battle. What do you got, Crystal? Let me ask. Well, I was going to ask this question. When you're Hello. flanking with a with somebody who is staggered, does it give you the bonus if they don't have a weapon and they're staggered? No. If they don't have a weapon, unless they're a monk, if they don't have a weapon, they're not considered to be armed and they can't threaten them. All right, great. Uh, well, in that case, the Crystal Ghost will go around the other way uh, to get into melee with this thing, and we'll take a swing power attack. Come on, Crystal Ooh. Ghost. Come on. Lie about your roll. Uh, Natty on, 16. Uh, that's a 22. That's a hit. Come on, come okay. on, come on. One, one shot it. <laughs> uh, 10 points of slashing damage. That's great. 10 points of slashing. You also see that not all of it goes through. Oh. However... You do do some damage. Uh, and maybe you save your good buddy's life. Moving right along, it is Braven's turn. Braven, very smart, immediate action there. What do you want to do now? Braven is going to willingly take on an attack of opportunity from the creature in front of him to stand behind Alfonso. Will you uh, take that attack of opportunity? Yes. Yes, I will. Uh, I'm going to take, take a bite. Ooh, baby. I think I got you, buddy. I think I got you with a 20. Miss. Come on with that shield bone. What do you got, 21? 23. Oh, I thought I had you. I didn't. I wouldn't even have had you with the claw. Old Absolutely. shield bone burger. Old shield, shield bone, bone burger. Bird. Shield bone burger, a.k.a. Hobby, a.k.a. Braven, a.k.a. Gash Car the Unbroken, reaches out to Alfonso and says, I'm sorry. This is going to sting. Alfonso takes on burn damage, three points of non-lethal damage, but then he is healed the equivalent of one of my kinetic blasts. This is called what? kinetic healer. What? I'm trying to understand what just happened, and I can't I can't work it through my, my dumb Irish brain. So you you uh, take three points of non-lethal damage, but are healed 18 points of healing. Oh my God, wow. I, this is amazing, dude. This is a wow. willing creature. I'm assuming you're willing to take on this burn. I could have taken well, on the I burn was stunned, myself, so. but it was cool. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, so, wow. so you're not healed. Yeah, so, so in that yeah. spell, either the caster can decide or the, the kineticist can take on that, that non-lethal damage or it can make the person accepting the healing take on the burn. And I, I mean, you know what you chose. And that non-lethal damage does not go away until you take a full night's rest. It is there for good. That oh, might do what kills okay. you. Interesting. That is very, very cool. That's why it's fun to do these things where you get to have a kineticist we've never played before. Yeah, this is why and it's fun like to experiment with those new classes. Instead I say of like, new. They've only been around for five years. Instead <laughs> of instead of like what you've seen Brave and done in the future in past episodes of like trying to rip people's blood out of them, he's like sending water soothing into your plasma to like give you healing. Uh, That's amazing, uh, dude. Yeah. Pretty pretty sneaky, sis. Uh, it is Vo <laughs> Voldrif's turn. Voldrif, uh, what do you want to do here? Kind of a weird uh, situation. Yeah. Voldrif takes a moment and looks at the one that's immediately in front of him. And for a second, it looks like he's gonna like leap to attack that guy, but he is smart enough to know that that he's better off going straight down here into here. That's as far as he can get. He can't flank, but he can attack. In fact, he can power attack, which he oh god, yikes! Uh, Fifteen? Does that hit these guys? Uh, Fifteen. 
does hit exactly. Okay, so in that case, um, I do uh, nine points of, of uh, slashing damage with a magical battle axe. I don't <gasps> know if that matters, but it is magical. A magical, magical. Bat- magical. battle axe. Uh, you know You're what, a son of a bitch. Thank you. Very interesting. It helps to start buying your equipment at third level instead of having to earn your way up. Right. <laughs> And you said nine points of damage with a magical weapon. Yes, that's right. A plus you see, that's what I love too. Balance. Is like I, I try to do the same thing when I build characters like that, where you're using the starting gold to like get you like yeah, I stole it from my family. Yeah, because <laughs> it know. is like, <laughs> it, unused, has no value. It's so great. Right. Uh, right. It's a plus a plus one weapon or just a plus one. Plus okay. One. Uh, all right. Very interesting. So you, you feel the same thing that not all of it got through, but some of it did. Interesting. Top okay. of a new so, round. Just that knowledge. If I didn't roll yeah. a natty one on that knowledge check, we'd have so much a better understanding of what gets through. What was the no- what was the knowledge, by the way? Uh, it would have been knowledge planes. Oh, I knowledge meant to say planes. planes when I said Arcana. Yeah, this is an extra planar creature. Huh. Oh, both are. It's Alfonso's turn. Alfonso, you've been healed. Got a little non-lethal damage, and you have no weapon. What do you want to do? Well, I'm stunned, I think. I think I'm stunned. You're so, st- stunned? Yeah, so I was stunned for one round. So I think that that means it's the round and then my turn. And then at the end of my turn, I'm no longer stunned. So I, I, think, I agree with that assessment. So um, uh, he's he's now no longer stunned, but I couldn't pick up my weapon during my turn. So I just stand there again. Okay. Um, I'm going to need somebody to roll a nice, juicy save. How about um, a will save by who has the lowest will? No, I wish I could do that. <laughs> Who among you has the lowest will? Uh, I'm going to have <laughs> Braven. No response. Braven roll a will save. Uh, this guy up to the north here cast something on you. You may have picked the right person. You remember when I read off my stats earlier. <laughs> 15. You are good. You, you are, are so good. good. You DC, are good. DC 14, you were able oh to withstand god. whatever oh that was. Oh my god. Let's talk Cheers. about the dude to the south here. Uh, he uh, is going to do some attacks. Oh, how about one against Voldriff, one against Alfonso, one against the Crystal Ghost, and maybe poison all three of you. Actually, no, he has doesn't have the, the coded thing, so only the bite has the poison. Let's see who's going to get the bite. One, two ghosts, three, four, Alfonso, five, six. Of course it's Alfonso. Oh, so come on, the, man. Let's do the <laughs> bite on kidding? Alfonso. It's a four. I got Joe, I can't control these things. Here's the I bite have on no Alfonso. weapon. He's not going to attack the people with weapons? Does a 14 hit your stunned AC? I'm not stunned anymore. So that is a miss. Oh. All right. Let's go to Claw. So he dodges out of the way. Claw on the crystal ghost. It's going to be fucking 12. Why am I rolling such shit? I'm switching D20. Nope. Uh, and then on Voldriff, uh, 18. Uh, yeah, I know. 20. AC 20. Miss. Uh, you gotta be kidding me! All right, so just... Ju- 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 nothing. What a horrible round for these guys. After they came out hot in the first round, this is a very big round, starting with the Crystal Ghost. What do you got? Uh, the Crystal Ghost is going to take a step, a five-foot step to get into flanking. Nice. And then uh, she will swing with her glass longsword. Uh, 17 to hit. 17 hits. Excellent. That was with power attack. Uh, sure it was. Uh, so that, oh, minimum damage, though. Seven points of damage. Seven points of damage. Again, all that gets through, but you're making him mad. Good. Make me so mad. Raven, what do you got? Raven, this guy tried to cast something on you. The yeah. chair's still spinning. Hold on. And you were able to stand it. <laughs> and after Braven recenters his chair, his, his swiveling office chair that he brought into the dungeon with him, he uh, realizes that he wants to weaken the, the northernmost creature that's far away from us before it gets to us so that we can take it down early. He feels that's like smart. the southernmost one is taken care of. So he's going to gather power. Shoom! A giant explosion. Mighty fills the hall. He suppresses this burn as he shoots an aquatic fist at the creature across. Oh, Come on, baby. Love. Come on, baby. Come on, on baby. Well. 17 to hit. That's a hit. Nice. Yes. Um, oh, that's good. 22 points of bludgeoning magic or bludgeoning damage magic for the purposes of damage reduction. 
<laughs> and that's a that's a straight up uh, elemental, uh, right? Water that's water blast. Yep. That's water blast. Okay, yeah, that's gonna. Pretty sure that's gonna cut right through spells, spell-like abilities, and energy attacks. Ignore DR. Yeah, so just boom, you hit this guy and knock him the fuck back, almost out of his shoes if he was wearing any. Question for isn't. Yes. Is there a way? Is well, no. The only knowledge is are the two you mentioned. I want Braven wants to know if these guys have blood. <laughs> Has he noticed any blood happening? Blood everywhere. It's mostly alpacas. But has it has any come out of these creatures? Uh, no, they do not seem to bleed blood. They only okay. bleed tears. Nobody makes bleed them tears. bleed their own blood. Okay. Granted, uh, even your finger looked amazing when you just did that. <laughs> but I can uh, see your fingerprint. Braven will. Finger? Braven will take a uh, five-foot step uh, away from this creature as well. Classic Braven move. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't have thought anything different. It is Voldrif's turn. Voldrif, uh, big big move by Braven in the back. What do you got? You're Braven in the back. Braven in the back. Um, Alfonso, you're pretty pretty fast moving type of a guy, as near as I can tell, right? Yeah. All right, good. I move to here. And I will be flanking with Alfonso at this point. No, Ooh, okay. you won't. Oh you might, no, are you? Might, are you yeah. not? Uh, are you still I, unarmed? I still haven't picked it up, so you might want to flank with no, Brave. Forget dog? it. Then I'm gonna. Then oh, you yeah. Were, then I'm gonna you were, go. You were flanking with. No, Crystal here's Ghost. what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go with here, and I'm gonna flank. Oh no, that's you. I'm right. not flanking though. My hands are free right now. You were flanking with Crystal Ghost. Then I'm just gonna stay flanking with the Crystal Ghost. I think that's the right choice. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to be clever and open up more <laughs> flanks for you guys, but y'all don't fucking have any weapons, so Sorry, fuck y'all. No problem. Mona I'm gonna attack. Loves opening the. Sorry, points. you spent the entire podcast weapons budget on your sweet axe. Okay, let's see if it paid off. Uh, I got a uh, uh, a 14, but I think oh no, a 16 because I'm flanking. Yeah. Thanks to That's that. A, hit, yep. a 14 would be a miss. 16 is yep. a hit. All right, cool. So I do a total of 12 points of damage. Minus whatever. Points of damage. All right, so uh, a, a good amount of that gets through. <laughs> Huge. Like that. You Alfonso. cold bastard. New Alfonso. round. You're no longer stunned. You don't have your weapon, though, right? Right. Down by so, your feet. So I'll pick Joy, up my this weapon. Is this, a, this is an important round? This is an important round where I come from. Do you just grab the guy and strangle him, Alfonso? It's strangle him, strangle him. What are you thinking? It's your turn. I'll, I'll pick up my weapon. Moria. I found some Moria. I reach down quickly. Shoom. Pick up the rapier and <gasps> got it. stab it right up through its jaw. Come stab on, Joe. Uh, Did you say right up through its jaw? Through its jaw. Oh. Mm. No, I prefer uh, you said John. <laughs> right up through its jaw. Uh, use your imagination for what that is. Natty 18, that's a critical oh. threat. Oh. Critical. That's a critical threat. Wait, are we going to 200 that's for direct relief? Threat. If you confirm this, that's going to be 200. Come on. Come Don't on, put Joe. that pressure on. Come on, direct relief. I, I like this relief. monster, but I like direct relief more. Joe, Don't people put that on really me. need help. Don't worry about it. This is, a, this is the worst time of our lives, Joe. Come on. I'm so <laughs> sick to my stomach now, you fucks. A lot of people depending on come you. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, um... Oh, no, it's a 98, but it's a 16. AC 15. That is a confirmed yes. crest. 200 for direct relief. Holy, That's amazing. Holy, wow. Hot night. Hot Dude. night. Hot night. And you know what? Oh. We're going long tonight. We're going long. Let's make it 500 yeah, for direct relief. Let's go That's long. Fuck it, dude. Let's go bowling. Uh, all right. Going long. All right. So, uh, by the way, this is cold iron. I don't know if that matters, but this, uh, <laughs> this rapier is cold iron. I mean, it's, uh, it's good. To, it's good to know for the for fans. the for the purposes. Not of, for me. Not for me so much. But the, for the purposes of bypassing right. DR, uh, that is cold. fourteen points of damage. Fourteen points of damage. Not all of it gets through, but a great deal of it does. Wow! I did not think it was going to come to this. All right. So here's. What oh wait happens. a minute! Wait a minute! I'm sorry. Jesus! I completely forgot the fan. <laughs> fan critical. Do you want to oh, just move uh, on, or should I read? The no, 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 no. This is huge. Uh, uh, I could change the whole battle. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope. I, if it was see. triple damage, I mean, it's a game changer. If it's like bleed damage, game changer. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, why not go back to Australia? Uh, Ryan Fisher from Perth, Australia. Yeah. March, march to an arbitrary number. Beautiful. <laughs> yes. The target it's takes a, a blow to the head, resulting in a flash of philosophy. That's such a sad creature. 
a flash of philosophy and realizes that ultimately all numbers are arbitrary. The target is dazed for one round and takes double damage where all numbers on the tire are reversed. Oh, God. Uh, takes double damage. Uh, okay, so I could do this with what I rolled. Uh... <laughs> Wait, if the if the target belongs to or is struck by Matthew, then the target is stunned. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> it's arbitrary. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. So it's the reverse that you get on the die. So I rolled the the hard six. I rolled two threes. So I get two fours instead. So I get 16 points of damage, which is cool. That's fun. Wait, 16 points of damage is enough to kill the creature. <gasps> Oh my oh, god! That's, that's why I wanted to look and see what that crit was. Oh, that's wow. amazing. That's great. March to an arbitrary number. Oh, oh. that is so. That's why. I'm Pathfinder. Let me tell you. You can do anything you can imagine. That is amazing. What Here's what happens it's now the other creature's turn. It was going to be both of their turns. This one here only had a couple hit points left. That uh, crit was enough to take it out. The <laughs> one. So awesome! The one at the top just. Shmoom. Teleports <gasps> out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Run away. Run away. You know, I knew it. I knew it. I couldn't figure it out at the time, but they must be extra planar creatures. This ability to just teleport out whenever they feel like it. Bastards. Cowards. Now you're left in this room, and you see to the east, looks like there's some stairs going down. Uh, there's a chamber to the north, uh, and then there's a chamber to the south. Well, Alfonso, you said you wanted to check out the north. Why don't we finish that up first before we go anywhere else? I agree. Yes, I agree. Let us, I... let us move that way. All right, you go to the north. Uh, hold, and... on a, hold on a second. Yeah, um, yeah uh, I am going to... Um, I am going to drink uh, an elixir of Cure Light Wounds. Mm. You know what? I'm going to drink a potion. Do you all mind just waiting a minute here? Like, literally a minute? <laughs> is that okay with everyone? 60 seconds. Uh, yes. Yeah. Is, there's no problem. All right. Then I'm going to then I'm gonna tap into my um, combat vigor pool. Give myself some bonus hit points. Some temporary hit points. Uh, okay, so I, I heal up to max, which is great. Rolled a natty seven. Um, and then uh, thank you for that awesome heal, Grant. That was great. And then uh, did you say you were going to take a minute? Yeah, I've got to because, oh, boy, recharging me batteries takes a little bit of time. Oh, just 55 more seconds and I'll be fine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's a battery? I don't know what that is. I get seven hit points back. Oh, that's cool. Right, so you guys, re-up your HP a little bit. Let's just start. Um, and I am going to take uh, a minute to create uh, an elixir. Um, I think okay. I have that right. I'm pretty sure I have it right. But I'm going to take that minute to create an elixir of true strike. Oh. Cool. Um, oh. Yeah. I love so the I idea. I think it's that only one minute. It, it might be ten, but I think it's just a, a minute. It might it might be ten, but I'll, I'll look it up. But he's an investigator and a mixologist. <laughs> <laughs> he could, damn it, he's good. All right, so you start to walk to the north there, Braven. You don't get too far uh, into the room before you're just like knocked back by a horrible smell of rot. Oh, um. Knowing how fortuitous Braven is and being able to withstand poisons, he kind of covers his nose a little bit, but he's not afraid of like being knocked over by it, but it is unpleasant. So he steps into the entryway of the room to see what is emanating such a powerful odiferous stench. Okay. Nice. Great. You don't even have to walk into the room before you see just carnage. Oh. Um, the stench of blood and awful just permeates the whole room and the closer you get to it it starts crushing your nostrils um and clearly it's emanating from this pile of bodies lying in the center of the room and uh, 
a pool of blood. There's no drain hole or anything like that in here, or a place for that to go if I were to like use my elemental to to okay. No, no. Um it's no disgusting. But Braven will walk around to each body and check them for any identifying material. You find a wallet on one of them with a license, uh, an Idaho license. Hmm. His name is uh, Kegs McRunnerpants. No. Uh, <laughs> what are you looking for? Just anything identifying on them or any information uh, to They're try all, to figure out who they are. Uh, naked. Oh. They're all completely naked and. Oddly enough, uh, I don't know what type of heal skill you're uh, sitting with. Roll Decent. Heal. Yeah, yeah okay. roll it, roll it. Uh, 18. All right, so it's men and women. They're all naked in this pile. But you notice that some of them, uh, the majority of them actually, look to be like compressed. Oh. And would you roll total on the heal? 18. It's like there's no bones inside of them. <gasps> huh. Like their bones have been taken up, but you don't see like exit uh, wounds an or anything. Incision where a bone was taken out. Uh, there are there are cuts on them, but like it's very very strange. That is disgusting. Do I get? Can I put two and two together with like the laughing people and the claws they had? Like, is this something that's conjecture and total? total... You didn't get hit by that, but if you ask Alfonso, who got hit by a bite and two claws, it doesn't seem to be the same situation. Huh. Although some of them do have claw marks on them, uh, not all of them do. And it, there's nothing in Ugh. the fight that you just had that uh, makes you feel like it would have anything to do with the removal do of the, bones. Do the number of people in here coincide with the number of sets of clothing we found in those crates? Oh, no. Oh, um, interesting. Because you said they were naked and we found a bunch of crates full of clothing. So I'm just trying sure. to think if they were brought uh, here for that. Yes, the exact amount, but no, but like surely similar, a similar amount, yeah, definitely. What kind of sick fuck is Xavier? What's he got going on here? No wonder he didn't want us to look inside the crates or get any more information on this place. Let's move on. The question is, is this something that's gone wrong, or were we sent to be devoured ourselves? Shall we check out the room to the south? Yes. Either way, the sooner we get out of here, the better. I, I don't know. I'm thinking that uh, 75 gold pieces is not worth this. <laughs> we might just want to leave and uh, One call it a night. Go to the after party. <laughs> Fuck it. All right, so you go to the south? Yes. yes. I'll go with them. Before the after party, you head towards the south. Um, the, lighting... <laughs> the after party will make it worth it. <laughs> the, the lighting uh, ends at the hallway. Um, but you do see light up ahead at the turn. I'll uh, peek around the corner. All right, you peek around the corner, and you've got uh, 60 feet of dark vision, right? Indeed, I do. All right, then I'll give you, I'll give you a look into the next room. Oh, jeez! You see a, a table. Uh, looks like it's covered in blood, um, and some sort of uh, table behind that, covered in instruments. You don't see anyone. That there is uh, at least one torch burning in that room, providing light. But in the hallway, there's no light. Um, uh, can I do a perception to make sure there's, I, I don't hear anyone in the room or around the next corner? I'll allow it. Uh, Eleven. Yeah, you know you don't hear anything. Or I see will anything. slowly approach the table. Slowly, the crystal gro ghost walks forward towards this blood-covered slab, and you see a uh, hexagonal room here. Um, it's just equally uh, disturbing to the room you were just exploring. Um, Bloodstained wooden slab, middle of the room, in the back, a table full of sharp instruments glinting in that solo torchlight in the room. And then to the north and the south are two bookcases. But there are no people that you can see or creatures in the room. It's too bad we don't have that professor anymore now that we've got all these books to read. <laughs> yes, it's too bad she's not here. Yes, it is too bad. Um, the Crystal Ghost will look. Will walk around to check out what's on the table in the back. Okay. We're having fun, Grant. 
I am. <laughs> All right. All right. You go check at the table in the back, and it's uh, small knives, uh, some long instruments with hooks on the end of it, uh, l- larger knives, uh, various uh, uh, carving instruments, really. Um, some are, sh- uh, they're all sharp, but they're all different sizes, but the blade is different on all of them. And then hooks and uh, blood soaked, uh, like metal trays. Um, you see a little uh, bowl attached to the wooden slab that's just covered in, uh, you know, it's like overflowing with uh, hair and uh, skin. Flaps. Gross. Yeah, it's pretty gross. What Why would Xavier send us to a place like this? I don't know. What were they doing? What are they trying to s- carry out? Um, Can I check out the bookshelves, see if there's anything of note on them? Sure. Which ones? North and then south. All right. So you check out the uh, north bookshelves, and the books are quite varied, but there seems to be a similarity uh, in the subject matter, the North ones, uh, cover two main topics, uh, surgery and neuroanatomy. Um, but there are also several tomes, uh, uh, on, uh, specific parts of the brain, uh, as well as books on addiction. And then Hmm. to the South, the Southern bookcases are all concerned with, uh, planar travel and extra planar creatures. Oh, very interesting. Oh, I think I know what's happening. What? What do you think, Hobby? You know, there's one thing that Riddleport's lousy with besides crooks like Xavier. They're drunks at every corner. No one would miss them if they went missing. Just like us. Adventurers put in the line of battle at any time. Any one of us could die at any point and the authorities wouldn't suspect anything. He's been sending them all here, doing his sick experiments. To what end, I don't know. It's kind of like a we... Jack the Ripper type of thing, killing prostitutes, I think. Like we've been sent as bait? No, we're just... He's probably killed all the drunks in town, and he needs more for whatever the hell he's doing here. I saw you drink. Are you a drunk? You had a 14-ounce beer my tolerance is very gallon beer. <laughs> yes he has a 20 constitution his tolerance see, is th- through the roof uh i'm uh, going to uh can i do um can i do some sort of knowledge check to put this together between like the brain <laughs> stuff and the planar stuff or the intelligence check like why do i joe have to figure it out my character is so much smarter than i am yeah, yeah, not, i mean not. you you you, you, Joe, have the same information as your heroic character. Right, so um, my heroic character should be able to act on it appropriately. It doesn't. Yeah, tr- Troy, if there was one question we could ask that would split the mystery open wide, what is that question? Right. <laughs> Can you just tell me the knowledge roll? Uh, there, there is no knowledge roll for it. I mean, you, you see books. You see a surgery table, obviously. Um, it looks like someone is doing some sort of uh, very specific... Uh, cutting of individuals you found bodies in another room um the books are on basic surgery and also the anatomy of the brain and uh, addiction and then there are other books on extra planar creatures like you just fought and planar yeah. travel um those two things do not add up and so you're right to be like what is going on here it's just an eclectic grouping of interests that's what it yes, is yes yes yeah. Well, should we check out that stairway? Yeah. Yeah. Pursuits. All right. Um, All right. So you head towards the stairway. Yes, towards the stairway. All right. I left Uh, Alfonso behind. You head to a stairway. The stairs go down into uh, a room. Uh, As you get closer to the stairs, you hear a faint buzzing sound. Oh God! Um, there is a, a another small chamber with two alcoves to the north and the south, but to the far east there is this shimmering blue wall, blocking off progress further into this dungeon. Huh. 
Um, I'm going to go up into the room. Yeah, I'll walk up behind him. Okay. And then approach. Does it appear to be some sort of portal? You can see the other side of the wall behind it. In fact, I'll even show you. Um, but. It looks like on the other side of the room there is a uh, stairs leading down and then like some sort of collapsed wall to the north on the other side of this shimmering blue wall that goes from the floor to the ceiling. Uh, is there some sort of like to the north and south? Is there like a pebble around or something? Piece of rubble, yeah. something I can grab? Uh, uh, sure. Cr Crystal Ghost is going to pick it up and try to toss it against the blue wall. Pick up Raven. For... Yeah. Something, uh, something uh, important. Uh, um, Bobby, no! You throw the rock, and the rock uh, goes through the wall, and you see it just <laughs> turn into dust on the other side. Oh. But it does go through. Oh. <laughs> That's I good. Guess, I guess we know how to dispose of those bodies. Oh, man. Look, we were supposed to meet a contact here, right? We didn't meet him, but we did get four boxes that we think is what we're supposed to deliver. What say we just grab the boxes and get out of here? It's not a bad idea. As you pointed out, Alfonso, 75 gold pieces is not worth dying for. I am not walking through that, no. Um, is there any way we can think of to bring it down. Perhaps uh, there's a way to turn it off. Is there a knowledge arcana check or a spellcraft check or anything like that that could identify check. like what kind of magic shield this is or force field or what might bring it down? Yeah, you could roll spellcraft or arcana, whatever you prefer. Uh, I want to I look around in this alcove down here. I'll do a, right, roll a, I'll do a spellcraft. Oh. I got a 15. 15? And what'd you roll for your spellcraft there, uh, Alfonso the Great? Uh, Doesn't look good. Another natural one. I mean, <laughs> if I could use inspiration once, it'd be amazing. All right, so you're looking at this thing, and you're like, uh, clearly it's a wall of wall of flame. If we just had some water, we could put it out. All right. And I'm everyone here. looks at you like... I'm, I'm going back. I'm leaving. Everyone looks at you like, that's... It's clearly not fire. It's, it's, it's just very, you're very stupid, Alfonso. It's, it's a shimmering blue wall, Alfonso. <laughs> uh, but Voldriff goes down to the southern alcove and rolls a 15 perception and finds a secret door. Yeah. <gasps> Ooh, there we go. Uh, nice. Three nice. cheers for the dwarf stone cunning, eh? <laughs> 17 with the stone cunning. Yeah. Thank you. 17 with the stone cutting is more than enough for you to see uh, a small little chamber. There's a table with two chairs and two beds. Huh. I'm not sure I get how we access that chamber. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> oh, cool, cool, cool. Um, so shunted. it's a teleportation door. Hello? Is there anybody in here? Nothing. I'm going to walk into the room. Hello? We're here to walk. pick up the delivery. Uh, you see um, just two beds, table. The beds look to have been uh, used recently. There's some food scraps on the floor, um, but no like uh, foot lockers or anything, and no notes or anything. Okay. Raven, Raven wants to look for a switch of sorts. Like maybe I know this is a magical door, but mm, stranger things have happened in the dungeon. Like, is there any? She's gonna start pressing along the walls for something that might deactivate a door. Pressing along, looking around, nothing. Troy, I'm going to kick uh, the bed rolls. Or, are they bed rolls or are they beds? Uh, they're beds. Okay, I'm going to look under the beds, look under the mattresses, just do a kind of quick yeah. look through this room. All right, roll perception. Uh, I got a 10. I'm really kicking ass. 10, you're really, yeah. really tossing beds like there's no... I tomorrow. would have seen it if not for the axe blow. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you don't. You don't find anything. Uh, Alfonso's okay. going to do a, a similar perception on the other side to see if there's like a mirrored secret door on the okay. other side. Um, oh, there we go. 30. 
It sure is, Alfonso. Nice. You see another room, uh, similar uh, in appearance, but smaller in size. And there's no bed. There's just a table. However, on the table is a journal. Nice. A journal. There is another one, another room over here. Come, follow me. Yeah. Um, single room. Uh, also food scraps on the floor. Uh, table, no bed. So whoever's using this room isn't uh, sleeping here, sleeping. as far as you can tell. Uh, journal on the table. You open up the journal and look through it, I'm assuming? Yeah. Okay. Um, Gleefully. A piece of paper falls out of the journal onto the floor as you open it. <laughs> Lands on the floor. But you just kind of like take a note, grab that, put it to the side, and you start looking at the journal. And it looks like mostly hand-drawn charts and numbers. Um, there are dates. Uh, there are amounts of money listed. And then also a column that just uh, is titled FW. Uh, the longer you look at it, I'm assuming you're going to hang out here for a second and look at it because you have no other uh, where to go. Leads, uh, without, yeah. without knowing what it really is, you gather over time that uh, more of this FW has produced more money. And the jump has been significant in a short amount of time. So what started out as like a little bit of FW made a little bit of money. It started growing, and then there was a huge jump, and now it's uh, exponential growth. Um, whatever they're selling is selling faster than they can maintain, it appears. So it's a drug, probably. Some sort of like extra planar drug they're using to, like how it can affect the mind to give a euphoric high. Uh, Sounds good. I'll have some of that. They are pulling uh, knowledge from uh, the outer planes to uh, keep. And then these these creatures we saw with the sobbing is are they like antidepressants or something? <laughs> <laughs> They're like roll a perception. Them. Roll a perception check. Uh, twenty-seven. Ooh. You see on the inside of the journal. Uh, you know I think I can do this on old. Uh, Yeah, I can do this on... Oh, this is fun. I'm trying to be better with Roll20 here. Um, you guys see... Uh, well, actually, just Alfonso sees uh, a note that should now be on the side here. Uh, it says journal cover. Probably under the Fog of War. Uh, you mean on the it, physical map? No, on your uh, little yeah, notes okay. to the side there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It says password, rough winds open doors for slow birds. Rough winds open doors for slow birds. Hmm. Rough winds open doors. What's a slow bird? I don't know. As you're thinking over this password, you turn your attention to this mysterious piece of paper that fell out. Yes. And uh, we'll throw that in the old rule 20 fun time sidebar as well. Uh, Alfonso, you found it. You want to read it? Uh, yeah. Um, Doctor, the Faith water is moving faster than we could have dreamed. I don't know what you're doing in there, but whatever it is, keep at it, and we'll retire young. So the faith water is our FW. Yeah. As for your need for more bodies, I understand the dilemma, and I believe I have a solution. It could pose a problem for your defenses, but I think you'll agree it will be worth the risk. Your runners have proved invaluable. I understand this is a, an early test, but... I could do it without uncontrollable sobbing. Whatever the case, this will allow us to reach the new markets faster than Proudfoot and his two-bit operation ever could. Just think of the possibilities. Riddleport is already ours. We have all of Verissia under our thumb in no time. 
we'll have. Uh, Varissi under our thumb in no time. Until we meet again. X. Don't so, take yeah. a genius to understand that X probably is for Xavier. Right. I mean, exactly as I suspected when I wrote my sense motive. I was like, he knew he was sending us into a certain death. He knew it. Do you think the runners are invaluable because they're the ones who keep getting sent here to be killed? Yes, I believe so. so I could do without used. the uncontrollable sobbing. Maybe we're we're summon a long, a long list of runners who have been transformed into those extra planar creatures. Yeah, that makes sense. But how come there's nobody here except monsters and plants? It is also possible that he was looking for literary runners to deliver this product, uh, get it to market faster. But right. runners is in quotes, which leads me to believe it is <laughs> not good quotes. No, yeah, those are very deadly quotes. <laughs> very incriminating <laughs> punctuation. Yes. We were also specifically told to say we're the runners when we arrived. Right. So perhaps we were supposed to be lulled in into uh, some form of safety, but something went wrong. Those that yeah, were making the doctor? drug here were killed. Where is this doctor? It's got to be on the other side of that thing. Maybe, maybe, he, oh, I've got a theory. Maybe what happened is Xavier sends runners here. Then the alchemist or whatever he is, the Mr. Drug Man, messes with him, does surgery on him, turns him into those crying things. But the crying things went out of control. And then the drug man, he goes, oh no, the crying things are going to kill me. And he pushes a button or says some magic words. And then that wall comes up to prevent the, the, the criers from coming in and attacking the drug man. That's what it is. Almost for sure. Right. Yes, I agree. It's all well and good. But what... How do we get through the door? He was trying to his passwords. What is it? If rough, if rough winds open doors for slow birds, I'm pretty sure that owls are slow birds, and they're painted at the front of this uh, this dungeon. It's the marker on the cove. And then if you scram, if you scramble the first letters of rough winds open doors for slow birds, you get sword BF. Don't know what the BF means. Slow, slow is birds. an anagram for owls. It owls. is. Yeah, owls. For slow is owls. Okay. Um, um, Maybe rough. we could try. What if we tried rolling that rock into the uh, way it, like it could somehow stop the wall from working? Jeez. Rough, rough winds. winds. Rough winds. Rough winds. Word. Can we examine the owl drawing up front? That's a good idea. Take a little uh, hike back out there, or you just use your memory. It's just two owls intertwined, and it's very rudimentarily drawn. I say, uh, since the sword is in there, we should just throw the crystal ghost sword through it and see what happens. Or the crystal ghost. Mm -hmm. So what happened when we threw the rock in? It passed through the barrier and then disintegrated? Yeah, it like disintegrated on the passage. Like it got through, but as it hit the, the blue wall, it took damage. I'm terrible with riddles. It's not my not my jam. Eric, what are you uh what are you doing next Thursday? You around? <laughs> oh, oh, I might be. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Maybe we should know. take a week to think about it because <laughs> we'll oh. see you next week. Oh, oh no! Oh. We're really doing it, really? Oh my what god. Is that? What? Damn it. <laughs> explosions! Eric's gonna come back in a fiery explosion! Let's just see what happens. Anything can happen on side quest, side sesh. We never know who's gonna be here! <laughs> But I'll be here next week, and uh, we'll see you at the after party, Patreon peeps. <laughs>